high school poetry? Uh, <laughs> no, no, no absolutely not. not. Want, want to is such a strong word. I, oof, oof yeah, buddy. I, I, I think, um, I think I inflicted enough of that upon fictionpress.net that I do not oh, need God. to. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, JD. I didn't mean to give you a flashback. <laughs> I I can I conversely like I occasionally wonder. It's like, man, dare dare I go digging through the bowels of the internet to see if my high school fan fiction is still out there or no, not? No, no, mine is behind me in the closet. I have printed <laughs> out boxes of all of the things I wrote in high school. You printed your fan fiction? Like this is not a judgment. This is like I'm genuinely impressed. <laughs> Maybe there's Maybe. a level of. I love <laughs> I wrote I wrote fanfic in I wrote fanfic for exactly two shows uh in high school. Um I guess I get th three technically, I guess, if depending on how you count the Star Treks, but <laughs> <laughs> I wrote fanfic for the Matrix and then was somehow surprised that all my friends turned out to be trans. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote I wrote fanfic for Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Daria. Oh, those, those, okay. those were those were those were my three shit. Those were my three fandoms, and I wrote I wrote yeah, fanfic there you go. for yep. yeah. mm -hmm. I wrote mm -hmm. fanfic for Danny Phantom, a mm, ton of Danny Phantom fanfic. Good, good one, good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wrote fanfic for Harry Potter, like every doofus did. You, you had to. Mm -hmm. It was required. And then, yeah. and then, specifically real person fanfic for various emo bands mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. panic at the disco was the biggest one but also mm -hmm. fallout boy and my chemical romance you had to write frank and mm -hmm. gerard like it just mm -hmm. was a requirement mm -hmm. i never so i never actually did harry potter fanfic i did however do harry potter uh forum play by post role play Ooh. yes same we might Incredible. have crossed paths you know it's 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 not unreasonable possibility <laughs> i'm not gonna comment on that it's fine <laughs> Incredible. like fuck jk rowling like fuck jk rowling on the record just just fuck just fuck fuck, fuck, fuck jk rowling em. fuck them no. not fuck questions turfs. not fuck turfs Although I do kind of wanted to use um uh this is this is not really like really J.K. Rowling sucking uh, but this is just like in terms of the Harry Potter genre uh I I I bought the book for kids on brooms like last year and I and I've yet to use it and I would kind of like yeah. to try running a kids on brooms game at some point. Ooh. Hell yeah, I'd play it. Yeah, Hell I would yeah. love that for you, Brendan. I've even got like 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 a vague setting in my brain for it, but I just gotta like actually like do the okay I'm gonna run a game now work. Listen, for um uh whatchamacallit, what's what's the thing that we do? Uh the twelve days, uh twelve uh, games yes. of Hazmus yes, this yes. year, which I am already starting to percolate on. Uh this is a weird announcement. I haven't talked about it to the admin team yet. Uh hi Brendan <laughs> and JD. We're talking about it now. <laughs> hey, what's up? Impromptu impromptu <laughs> admin meeting. Impromptu admin meeting. Uh uh I am already planning uh that for uh this this season, so Get your games together. Um, welcome. Hi, everybody. We <laughs> are live from the apocalypse. We are a not-for-profit TTRPG studio that makes actual play content in the forms of streams and podcasts to raise money for nonprofits, aid organizations, and progressive causes. We're currently raising money for the Rainbow Railroad, a global organization that helps LGBTQIA plus individuals facing persecution in or displacement from their home countries find safety. And yes, they do operate in America. We need that shit right now. We ask that if you like what you see here, you take that $5, $6, whatever dollars that you can spare, rather than give it to us, give it directly to the Rainbow Railroad. Um, the donate button is right where the subscribe button should be. Uh, and by clicking that and donating, you can make the McElroy's brothers yell at us and interrupt whatever dramatic and important scene is going on. Um, mostly this will just mess up JD because he's the only one who can hear those things, uh, which is which is cool. Um, we, we, we love that for them. Yes. 
this channel does have some donation incentives. Um, some some games do, some games don't. But a fifteen dollar donation will allow you to give the player of your choice plus one forward. A twenty dollar donation will allow you to give a player of your choice minus one on their next roll. Uh, and if you donate twenty five dollars, you can force me, your poor GM to run the game in a stitch voice for 60 seconds. You will not find a deal like that anywhere else. Now, moving forward, uh, let's introduce our fine players. Amber, would you like to go first? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Amber, also known as the Space Jamber. I'm a three-time, let me say this, three-time any nominated TTRPG writer, editor, podcaster, and streamer. Um, unfortunately, did not win any innies at Gen Con, but you know what? It's just an honor to be nominated. Uh, I am currently on hiatus for a lot of things right now because of health reasons, uh, so nothing really to plug except a secret of, I mean, a season, season of Secrets and Shadows Season 2 coming in September. woo um, but yeah, uh, you can find me anywhere there's internet at the Space Jamber. I am playing Imogen, pronouns she they, um, matching my pronouns she they. All right, thank you so much. And Bedlam, okay, it's hard to follow up after that. Um, I am Bedlam, I am coming to you live from a hotel room. Um, I am traveling right now, so uh, please bear with my audio and video delay. Um, and I uh, here, um, you know, every other Friday uh, playing in this game. Uh, and, and that is really it for me. Yeah. All righty. And Brendan. Uh, hey everybody, uh, I am Brendan playing Sefer, uh, Brendan he him playing Sefer, they them, um, uh, lovable teenage Frankenstein, thembo, v2 rocket in a trench coat, uh, etc, etc. Uh, I am mostly out here on LFTA, uh, running and playing in various games. Um, we're just doing the plugs up front, is that we're doing it for this game? Uh, we could do the <clears> plugs <throat> at the end. Okay, cool, um, that, that is mostly what, uh, what I'm, what I'm, uh, out here doing uh and i'll talk about other stuff that i am doing at the end of the stream quick clarification question so for are we doing we're doing the tiltify again for donations now is that how we're doing it i have not been aware of any changes to the oh right i was listening to the vod for academy yeah H. will updated me moments ago i have not had a chance to mentally process enough to verbalize what he said to me mm, mm. Except sure. that he's pretty sure the donate button is now working. It's so working. Say, okay. Cool, cool. We will Wonderful. find out together. If the donation button is not working, you can make it do the thing by with the command uh, exclamation point donate. Well, the reason why I was asking is because that actually sends, it gives us a link to the uh, Twitch donate and not the Tiltify. Um, interesting. This is how the magic happens. Oh, uh, by the way, that's just Gibson. Go ahead and donate. Please annoy us. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Just, no, yeah, please. No, we, please we, we, we crave uh, complication in, no, our, please in our, our, our pretend the, life. The whole reason we do this is, 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 is to shill for charity. So, like, please, please mess us up. 100%. All right. All right. Uh, something beeped uh and next uh is last but not least is jd hey i am jd my brain is not completely working today and i apologize for that uh pronouns he they i am playing soren augustine uh pronouns he him he is the revenant and i can mostly be found here on live from the apocalypse and hello i am your gm i am della uh, I am in this game that's called Master of Ceremonies. Uh, that's fun. Uh, I run this game and um, moving on with it. Cool. <laughs> when last we left our heroes, you were stuck in a parking lot in the loading bay of a... Uh, of the local mall. Essentially, you guys had been, we're back there for a couple of different reasons. 
Imogen and Jerome, you were there because you were going to trade off um, some information. Yeah, we had fun. Uh, Imogen, ripping, ripping, you were baby. going to Slop that thank down, you. Dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, thank you very for much. We boy. appreciate it. Um, the uh, um. I guess that is enough to make me technically do a stitch voice. Cool. <laughs> we're gonna, we're, uh, we're doing it live. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, wait, let me actually set my timer. Hold on. Oh, don't apologize. Don't apologize. Own it. Don't apologize for art. Don't apologize for art. Also, I, I love that our amounts are going to be screwy because it's defaulting to Canada dollars, AKA fake dollars. <laughs> wow, hey. get dunked on. Get dunked on uh Justin Trudeau. Damn. All right. This is a uh you were that. Yes. Imogen, you were back here to meet with Sam, who is going to give you a, a couple of boxes of paper that had been uh, picked up from the trash from the bishop's office. Uh, this information, you're looking through this for information um, about various things. Uh, Jerome, you were with Sam because you wanted to speak to Imogen um, following the revelation that your mother's bones had been stolen um, after coming off of your demonic uh, uh, I guess like community welcome ceremony, debutante ball I guess <laughs> initiation uh, initiation Catalian Catalian, yes <laughs> um, and uh Soren and Penny were in the back, and that's my sixty seconds. Uh, Soren and Penny were back there uh, painting each other's uh, uh, right hands, uh, nails for their right hands, because they had just stopped off at Hot Topic. Uh, and uh, all, of, all of you saw running down the alley, pursued by five armed men, Sefer. You engaged with that threat, fought them off using varying degrees of martial prowess to do so. Uh, and that's pretty much where we ended. So they all ran off. Those guys ran off into the car. None of them stayed behind, I don't think. None of them, they dragged their unconscious friends with them. And so that's where we pick up in the alley. Behind the mall. Uh, I th so I think Jerome probably would be uh, pretty surprised at uh at Sefer. Has, has Jerome ever seen Sefer really kind of uh, like really kind of go go out uh, um, before? I, I don't know if he has. I don't, I don't think so, because I think the only time that Jerome has actually seen Sefer like beat a dude's ass was John Snipe, um, whom, as we all know, that, was a bitch and had it coming. And obviously yep. it didn't it didn't it didn't it didn't take much. Uh, so so this is this is this is I feel like I think Jerome has seen Sefer like be violent at least once before but this was kind of next level yeah yeah now um wow sefer uh incredible that was amazing i, I just i just kind of want i i'm sorry i'm sorry you all got involved in that i don't i just kind of want to be left alone i don't really just i don't i'm sorry you all had to see see that I, you know, it's no, it's no big deal at all. Uh, uh, I mean, we just help you. It looked like you were, looked like you might be in trouble for a moment there, but uh, wow, you, you had that. Um, 
Do you know why they were here? What was that? Where where they come from? I I don't know. They just I just I was heading heading home from wherever that place was that I was heading home from. Um, and I I clocked the them them like you know they they, they were like doing mel sketchy, you know, like just kind of like like you know creeping creeping up on me and like in their 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 weird creeper car. Um, so I decided I was going to try to like cut through a field to get home and I wanted to cut through like the mall just because I thought they weren't going to chase me through like, like, you know, a place with a lot of people, but then they, they did because they're just that creepy apparently. And so I just, I had to like, I don't know. I just kind of went like, like sicko mode at them and I don't, you know. Wow. Anyway, but that, yeah, that was, that was incredible. Um, has anybody seen them before? Like, have you seen them before? I, I, they didn't look familiar to me. No, I mean, I think, like, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, they were creeping on me before, so who knows how long they've been creeping on me. They could have been, like, you know, w w watching me sleep or some other creepy shit like that, for all I know, but... Man. They suck. Um, just to, uh, a note for you, uh, Sefer, you were on your way back from your doctor's appointment with Dr. Thessiger. Thank you. That's where you were. Um, if anybody wants to, to see if you guys know, knew any of these people, or if you recognize them now that you're out of the fight, I think you guys might have done this last time as well. But if you want, I could let you guys, you could roll with mortality, uh, and see if you know anything about these people. Is that open to the whole table? Open to the whole table. You were all there. Okay, good, because I rolled a 10. Fucking sick. Now, as the <laughs> scholar... Lol. That's a four. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. Oh, cool. I, uh, I also ended up with a, with a 10, because it turns out, like, Ooh. I have three in mortality. When did that happen? Wow. Damn. Okay, two 10s. I, I have minus two and I rolled a three. So six, six, one, six. What one, one-eyed snake, baby. <laughs> hey. Whoa. So you guys, we're basically rolling, put a face to a name, and you guys are rolling with the faction, which means this is a faction move. So all of you get to, um, uh, all of you get to mark mortality if you have don't have mortality marked. Um, have any of you marked everything? I think I did, and I sent you the wrong version of my sheet. Hold on. Okay, yeah. So you you've upgraded a thing. I I, I have I have not. I am needing night, but everything night. else is marked. All right. Everybody. Yeah, I still need power. Yeah. Oh, I need night. Okay. Yeah, I fucked okay. up. I need night. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So the two of you who rolled tens. Um. It makes sense that you two would know these people. You didn't know these guys. But sitting back now and kind of thinking about it. You guys have heard of the Sons of Adam. Who are a... <clears throat> Mm, a political organization, or they would call themselves a political organization. Um, some people would call them maybe a militia. Some people might call them a domestic terrorism organization. But mostly, what they are is a group of people who are profoundly anti-supernatural. They are extremely tied to the church. Think Opus Dei, but without like, um, but like not funded with the Catholic Church and lacking some of that Catholic aesthetic. These guys are very. They're not particularly active in Maryland. One of the reasons why 
Maryland is such a like chill place for supernatural to be is that these guys usually aren't here. But this is very much their MO. Get a bunch of guys together, locate a single supernatural individual, and go after them with everything you've got. Thankfully, these three guy, these five guys were clearly not expecting backup, and they were clearly not expecting Sefer to be uh, a big deal or to be um, uh, capable of fighting them. Which leads you to, to believe, I think especially you, Imogen, who's so used to being like threat assessment, damage assessment, like your analyst brain is just going. Um, to be like, okay, they're probably still pretty weak in Maryland. They, they're not here in strength, but that these guys felt they could do this at all is upsetting. Um, this is something that if this happened in Florida, um, you would be like, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of thing that happens in Florida. Um, even if this kind of thing happened in like Pennsylvania, you might say, oh, that's a little too close to home. But yeah, that's the kind of thing that happens in Pennsylvania. Mer this is weird that it's happening here. Hmm. Y'all, I don't like that this oh, just uh, happened. Okay. I really don't like that this just happened. I mean, the uh, the Sons of Adam being here in Baltimore is just... Um, I remember my mom telling me about them, warning me about them at some point, you know. Whoa, whoa, you think those were, you think those, those were Sons of Adam? Yeah, what makes you think that, Imogen? Oh, now that you mention it, yeah. By uh, now any that... means necessary? They just attacked a bunch of teenagers. In like broad it really daylight. fits their it really fits their mo too right like this is what they they do they like find supernaturals and like stalk them and threaten them and i don't know they do other things too right i mean look at us we have a saint we have a construct bedlam i mean not bedlam sorry jerome i don't even know what the fuck you are what i'm just tall <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I guess, I guess that does make, I mean, I guess that makes sense to put it that way. I guess, um, I mean, it's not just like me necessarily. I don't know. I guess I, I guess I'm just kind of been kind of always waiting my whole life for the, you know, the torches and pitchforks to come out. You know, and here they not are. to not to invoke a cliche. Yeah, but it shouldn't be like that. Like that's not normal. That they're no. that's not right. They're they're not doing. No. It. Yeah, it's no. not okay at all. No. no, absolutely not. Yeah. Like there's no reason anybody here should be treated any differently, uh, and that's just that's just a fact. So I I I don't know what they're up to and what their motive is, but it's wrong. As you guys, uh, at this point, I think Sam would kind of poke his head out from behind the dumpsters and be like, hey, uh, are they gone? Yeah, seems like it. Cool. I'm gonna go. Did any, uh, do y'all need a hand or anything? Or Imogen, you got your boxes? Let me clean this mess up. But thank you, Sam, for everything. Oh, 
All right. Uh, Imogen, I can help you carry those. Uh, they're I was helping Sam with it. They're they're not light. I can I can I can give you a hand here. Yeah, uh, I, I can help too. Yes, yeah, Sefer, I think, is already awkwardly trying to like shuffle all of the pages back together. Definitely, like, definitely not in whatever order they were in whenever they first spilled out. Oh, I forgot they spilled. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, remember? Sure. Imogen, Imogen hit a guy with the whole with the full box, and briefly, mm. papers floated around them like doves in an anime. Yep. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah, sick. totally forgot about <laughs> that. Yeah. It was sick as hell. It was sick as hell. Uh, Jer- yeah, Jerome's super sound is helping to try to figure it out. He he would also be maybe taking a look at what the papers say as he picks them up, you know, just out of curiosity. But yeah. Um, do you want to roll with Anything to see if you can glean any information? I mean, he's not going to be studying them. He's helping, but, you know, maybe, maybe glance it on the ground as he's going to go pick them up. Uh, so, yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, um, that's a seven for the roll. And what am I? Is there glean information? Uh, there is. I mean. Let's see here. Yeah. Let me see. Not. I was looking for like an investigation or there something. There isn't really an investigation. Lines. There's yeah. investigate a place of power, which might be it. So you can roll again mortality. Um. Yeah. Uh. But I, I wouldn't be looking for that necessarily here, right? Like yeah. that would be a big stretch. So uh, you can roll with mind in that case. I'll say just roll mind. Yeah. Okay. That. There we go. Seven. Um. Oh right. Jerome is. Jerome is not like the most like purely Mind, intelligent. Mindful. Uh. He. That's a. That's a six total. Six total. You. You don't get anything. You're just like papers. Like, um, I think, I think you probably wow, this looks like research. This could be historical research. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I actually, I'll give you an, I'll give you an opportunity here. Um, yeah, no, I, I never mind. You, yeah, you, you, this is all just research stuff. Yeah. Um, this is stuff that Imogen does. I, I don't know. Like Jerome's like, okay, this is, this tracks. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think that Sefer will also be looking at that. I don't think intentionally, like, I don't think Sefer is intentionally digging into Imogen's business, but I think that they're... Yeah, just had their, fun. Oh, rip it, rip it, thank baby! You, thank you. Slop oh, that thank down, you dude. Oh, thank you for the donation. Yeah, thank you, Kian. Thank you, Kian. We appreciate it. Uh, and that is enough for a uh, plus one forward to Kian, is there someone that you would like to give that to in specific or should it just go to the pool? Pick your favorite child, Kian. <laughs> you can either pick your favorite child or just goes into a pool and I'll let people draw from it as as Pick desired. a child. <laughs> uh, but I think so, yeah, I think uh, not intentionally digging into Imogen's business, but I think just Sefer's like imperative to sort of to protect the valuable, I think that there is an element of mm. their their supernatural biology that their eyes are just reflexively scanning the pages, trying to uh, pick up pertinent information. Mm. Interesting. All right. Okay. <laughs> Are you resisting an opportunity to fulfill your instinct? I don't. Th- I, don't I, I actually. I don't think they're resisting. So I don't think they actually fully understand that it's happening. Okay, understandable. So I'm looking at your sheet here. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um, that needs to be bigger because I can't read it otherwise. There we go. Um, what? Yeah, roll with mind. All right, well, mine's not bad. I'm a, I'm a mindful. Where is your mind? I'm not that mindful, apparently. Uh, five. 
Nope. Yeah, well. Nope. Uh, the 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 world does not want anyone to know uh, Imogen's business. Yeah, you know, fair enough. Their their stuff is just too secret, too important, too secret. <laughs> Clandestine and Byzantine and all kinds of other cool words. Yes. All of them. So you guys pick everything up. Um, Penny is looking nervous uh, and uh, is like checking, checking her watch um, because she's got her meeting with um, with Ace. And she will, she asks if Jerome can come with her. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, I, I got to talk. Um, uh, also, uh, before I go, though, like, um, Imogen, do you want to <laughs> come along or like, can we meet up at some point? I got that, that thing that you lost. I really want to, like, see if we can we can find that. Um, uh, so I don't know, like, what you're up to or anything, but uh, that'd be awesome if we could maybe go. Uh, yeah, I can, I can do a little bit of a ride along with you for sure. Um, and if, if, I don't know if the rest of you guys want to meet Ace, uh, like he usually treats us at the morning star diner. So could be a free lunch. I don't know. Uh, plus he's a cool guy. I mean, I was already, um, I was already going to go along with Penny, but for, I mean, you shouldn't be alone right now it seems like so i mean if we're all going it seems like you might want to come with us yeah no i think that's good i don't know if i after that necessarily like I, i'm gonna have to like i'm gonna have to tell my parents but i don't know that i really want to like deal with that right now um i don't know my mom my mom she gets super paranoid like starts like hiding guns under everything um i also Wow, I haven't sorry, I haven't exercised like that in a minute, and I am extremely hungry as it turns out. I could eat several sandwiches. I would enjoy several sandwiches, in fact. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great idea. Um okay. so you guys head toward the Morning Star Diner. Um you can either take a bus or you uh, can walk or, um, you know, probably f figure out a way to get there. Um, she all trapes into the Morning Star Diner and sitting in a big booth in the corner is the demon Ascentagoramath. Uh, Ace is wearing a a button up shirt uh and a pair of ripped jean shorts um because he's got weird goat legs and he looks kind of like he looks kind of like uh, young Lenny Kravitz, except Ooh. his eyes are starving black pits. Uh, and he smiles, showing far more very pointy teeth than a human should have, and says, Oh, it's the whole crew. That's really great. It's really great to see all of you, huh? Jerome waves casually. He knows that Ace is very casual in his in his stuff. Hey, hey, Ace. Oh, he hey. Takes a hey. seat down at the at the table. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. He'll open up a, a flask and pour something into uh, a coffee cup. There are coffee cups sitting there waiting for all of you. Um, uh, and he pours something, Jerome, into yours. Um. And says, congratulations. I hear congratulations are in order for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, Ace. Sure. Cheers. Yeah. He takes a very little sip of it because he's not sure what 
taste might affect. <laughs> it is very whiskey. It is very whiskey. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would say <laughs> it's extremely whiskey. All right. Contrary to popular opinion, uh, uh, Jerome doesn't really imbibe in all that much. So he takes the, the smallest of sips and then puts it back down, but makes it seem like he's he's having a bit more. So yeah, yeah. And I think Ace, Ace kind of knows this about you and is always kind of just giving you stuff with no expectation. <laughs> um. Are, are are all of the coffees whiskeyed or just just Jerome's? Just Jerome's. I, he will offer it to all of you. Is it anybody? Would anybody like some? No, thank uh, you. Uh, no, thank you. Actually, actually, I think um, if it's not too much of an imposition, um, I, I might. Um, I need. Uh, I need. I need. A, I need a solvent. Of course. It pours. Uh, just pours. Do you uh, unadulterated? Uh, actually, yes, actually. All right, uh, and he he'll grab like a, um, like a like a water glass, like and pour a little bit of whiskey into that and just hand it to you. Okay. Oh, thank you. No, it's sorry. It's a it's it's a it's an aqua regia precursor. Um. True. Soren is just <laughs> staring at Sefer and is just like. <laughs> You know your body best. What is this? <laughs> Upsetting. What words just true. left the skies now? <laughs> Aqu <laughs> Aquatafana? <laughs> Aquafina? <laughs> Jerome, uh, Jerome clues in Ace. He's like, yeah, Sefer, Sefer just went through a, a little bit of a thing. We, we just had a run in with, we think, maybe the uh, Sons of Adam. Uh, and uh, anyway, so he could use a bite. For sure. You you say that Ace has been like, you know, pouring drinks. He brings the waitress by and is like, get these kids whatever they want. Uh, like while you're talking, um, and then he like, as soon as you say Sons of Adam, he freezes. Like, yeah. Sorry, they they. Um, I confused uh, Sepper with Brendan. <laughs> you. They. You were the sons of Adam, you say? We think so. I Imogen, that's a pretty good idea. That, and, that they might have been the sons of Adam. Yeah. But, and, yeah. Oh, and thank that's you for you. the reminder. Amber just Sorry. got a big email. <laughs> so I was like, oh, hold on. What? Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you on, <laughs> throw you on the spot there. I, I yep, I, yep. No, no. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, Ace, I'm so sorry that we came bursting into your spot. Um, no but, worries. I'm easy going, but less easy going is the sons of Adam. Tell me, tell me all about them. Actually, is there like a way that I can vibe check Ace to see like how, like Please. if I can trust him? Please. Uh, this is again um, roll. <laughs> With herpaderpy, I don't think I have herpaderpy do as <laughs> um, a stat. Well, in that case, uh, uh, go ahead and roll with knight. Actually, with knight, yeah, go interesting. Ahead and roll with knight. That is an eight. An eight. But I can take an advance now, so fuck yeah. Nice. Nice. If anybody else needs knight, now is a great time to roll a bunch of faction moves on ace. Most demons would be wild. Um, what is it that you're actually trying to... Is he trustworthy? Would he take this information that I'm about to give about this encounter with the potential sons of Adam and use it against us? Ace does not really care about you. Okay. So that in this case is a good thing 
because it means that he he doesn't dislike you. Okay. He doesn't think that you are a threat. He doesn't think that necessarily he cares about Jerome. Right. But the rest of you are kind of just like y'all are doing your thing and he doesn't really care. It is possible that he'll take this information and what he does with it could have blowback. Because he is a he is a major player. Like he kind of he makes his home base here and so everyone kind of treats him like he's oh yeah, that's just ace, but in other areas of the country like he this is a this is a major player in supernatural and therefore church politics. Mhm. So anything he does with this could be a big deal. But it is unlikely to be hurting you personally. Okay. All right. Imogen probably has asked for like, I don't know, an apple juice or something. Um and like takes a long sip from her apple juice and then just goes, okay, so right before we were here, we were at the mall and we were leaving the mall. Um, It was just the four of us. Um, And the five of us. Yeah, Penny is there. I didn't, I didn't know we were still uh, weekend at Bernie's, Bernie's singing. Yep. Okay, um, so uh, the five of us and we were attacked in broad daylight by a bunch of adults. And obviously we are all children. Um, I have been told my entire life what to look out for in the way the Sons of Adam would work and the types of folks that they target and I feel like they were specifically targeting my friends here and they gesture to uh, the remaining four at the table Um, it's it's fucking awful that we were just trying to go about our business and Adults came at us with guns and batons and yeah, I I just, I'm afraid that maybe Maryland isn't so safe anymore. If, if this is what's going to start happening. Yeah, I I definitely agree. Now, Jerome, you said they were going after your friend here. They were going after... Oh, yeah. I mean, you. well, except for you're just walking through the uh, parking lot, right? Yeah, they started They started following me a while before I got there. I kind of started heading towards the mall, towards where people were. I thought maybe I could I could lose them, cut across the field back to back to my place. Stefan, are you sure we should be telling a demon all about this? I mean... Oh, Ace is fine. Ace I, mean, Jer- I mean, Jerome says he's cool. Oh, you don't trust Ace, you're, me? Saints, Ace, Warren? you're cool, right? I'm extremely cool. I am extremely cool. In fact... I mean, you're giving teenagers alcohol, so... I'm giving one of my disciples alcohol, which I am legally permitted by the various charters that govern my uh, existence here. And, and technically speaking, alcohol isn't really an intoxicant for me. It's more of a, um, uh, I don't know, there's not really a good term for it, a lubricant. And I was just given this this gentleman uh sorry gentle person a lubricant that's all 
See, it's fine. It's all good. What's, it's what's, all right. a, what's a little uh, lubricant between friends? Uh, it, it helps. It, honestly, <laughs> it, 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 it helps. It helps keep the, the, the ventricles of my Athenor functioning properly. Can't have misfunction in ventricles of Athenor. Oh, no, speaking no. of which, did, did anybody put in those, the order for those sandwiches? Did, 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 did we get sandwiches? I think we needed some sandwiches. Sandwiches okay. are forthcoming. Sandwiches are forthcoming. Uh, the waitress will at this point. Um, Ace will. Ace will. Sort of like Zanze. I'm not surprised, Saint Soren, that you do not trust me. I am what I am, and you are what you are. What I am interested to know is how do they know what you are? Because that, uh, and here he's looking directly at Sefer, how do they know what you are? Because that was ventricles of Athenor aside, meant to be quite the secret. Yeah. I know it, of course, because I'm a sneaky son of a bitch, and you shouldn't trust me. I mean, I kind of figured, I mean, we, we were kind of past all of that. Well, like I said, I mean, I'm not sure maybe if they were, I'm not, I'm not sure if they knew what I was specifically, or if they were just targeting me because, like, I'm a supernatural, kind of like, kind of like Imogen said. Again, I kind of assumed it was the former, just because, like, I tend to try to like same reason I tend to kind of like stay away from wind farms, just kind of a kind of a a, a reflexive aversion. Um, but uh, I just um, I mean I don't know. I was coming from my doctor's appointment. Um, I mean if someone really wanted to find out um, the deal with me, they could probably put two and two together. Uh, I mean my uh, foster parents uh, are both former church hunters. Um, I my personal physician is a, a specialist in 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 homunculatronics like and there aren't many of those in 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 these united states um so i mean somebody now the question is why somebody would want to know other than just you know the reasons um huh Well, I think you will find that I am, by all accounts, an untrustworthy son of a bitch. But Jerome said you were cool. I am very cool. I am very cool. Cool and trustworthy are two completely different axes. Except for being self-deprecating. Sketches, yeah. sketches on a napkin, cool, cross equal sign, trustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Files that away. Um, but I do not oh. like anyone who's going to go after kids. That I do not find acceptable. And I will be looking into this. I take this sort of thing very seriously. I know people think, I know what people think goes on at the snake pit. But we're not here to hurt kids. And you all are, to an extent, kids. Well, I do believe I have about a mm, couple hundred dollars worth of cocaine for you, Jerome. And I believe I have a, uh, a bottle of sleeping pills for you, Ms. Grimpley. Oh, and awesome. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up. Thank you. Just real wow. casually going to bring that up. 
Yeah. That, I, that I so on a school. Yeah. 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 I mean, what? 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 I don't know. My, How's it dealing with a fucking addiction, man? I like. What are you? Oh, oh I'm not. To... I'm not looking at you, Ace. I'm looking at Jerome. Uh, you're I mean, dealing this is, cocaine. This is just one occasion. Uh, Mike. Uh oh. What was his last name? Oh shoot. Mike. Anyway, football Mike. Uh. I don't know, his 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 dad's like pretty prominent and like he's uh, he's going to be out of town and he's throwing this big party uh, and he asked me for some and normally I wouldn't like I'm kind of doing it as a special thing for him. Um, I mean, uh, I might be running for student body and it would really be great to have his support in the future. So, uh, and, and, you know, he's, he's pretty prominent at school and as a favor, I, I don't know, whatever. So this one time, but not usually. Jerome, there are so many things to unpack in that sentence, but you know what, <laughs> after what's happened today, this might as well happen. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just what other people have chosen to do. It's not that big of a deal. Right. So, uh, I don't know. So I'm getting it for him. Um, Rogers was the last name. Michael Rogers. Ah, oh, Rogers. That's right. Um, I gotta update the NPC, uh, the NPC list. Um, because it's not in the NPC list. It's in my GM. Yeah, I, I looked there, and then I was like, oh, it's in my notes somewhere, and I didn't go to the notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. So he's like, look, thank you for that information. That sounds like it was really scary for you guys. But understand, I am a demon. Oh, no, I understand that. There's I understand that entirely. Cool and good. I am not going to tell you what I'm going to do with that information. And if you knew, you would probably be upset with me. Except you, Jerome. Hey, that's usually a good reason for everything. So I don't know. Absolutely. I, I think you sell yourself short for days. Well, now don't you sort sell that cocaine? That's important. Oh All no! Right. Don't worry about it. I think he, right. I think he's overpaying. He high fives you. Um, <laughs> and uh, then he sort of hands he hands this little bottle of pills to Penny, who like grabs it and like. Puts it in her uh, her bag. Um, he says, "Well, thank you for bringing me all that information, and I hope you all enjoy your lunch. I have other business to attend to. Unless there's anything else you fine, upstanding young citizens would like to share with me." Uh. I think the Not church is trying to limit face. information. Oh. I'm sorry. I spoke out of turn. No. <laughs> I don't Go think right I'm on right. ahead. Um I can't prove anything. That's all conjecture, Mr. Ace. Um I but but I think the church is starting to limit the access of information of our history of other cultures and religions. Control. They are wanting to control access to any kind of potentially information that could potentially harm their reputation. Um, mm. And they're willing to tear apart already existing structures of the church to do it. And I, with the resurgence of the Sons of Adam, if it's a resurgence at all, you know, this, again, this is all just conjecture and this is completely off the record and you did not hear it from me, but I, I, I don't think any of this is a coincidence. Hmm. And that's, that's, that's all, that's all. I just, I just, I, 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 I don't trust the church right now, as far as I could pick one up and throw it. Um. 
what do you want Ace to do with this information? I don't even know. I think she's just word vomiting. Okay. You know? Like, it's just one of those things where you just, like, you've been sitting on something forever and you don't know what, like, it's actually for, but, like, holy fucking shit, you gotta get it off your chest? Like, that's exactly what's going on here. And, like, no one else she's talked to about this has been receptive to do anything about it. Yeah. And I think this is something that's going to be kind of interesting for you, Imogen, is that you've talked to other people about this before, and they've either been like yourself, like an intern, and their response was kind of like, yeah, okay, what do you want me to do about it? We can't do anything about it. Right. Or like your mom, who was just kind of like, well, that that sounds like a problem we'll have to work with or made or brushed you off. Mm -hmm. Like you got one kind of brush off or another. Ace does not do that. He had been about to get up and leave. And now he sits back down, sort of laces his fingers together, rests his chin on his hands and says, Interesting. I just feel like, Mr. Ace, if, if you don't mind me talking over while you're thinking, I've, I've gone to my mom about this. I've gone to my dad about this, but my dad's excommunicated, so he can't do shit about it anyway. I've tried going to my you know, fellow interns about this. I've tried going to my intern coordinator about this. I've tried, to, like, I've gone to every single adult or authority figure or whatever, and I feel like I, it, everybody in authority has failed, not only me, but this community by their inaction, either through ignorance or deliberate inaction. So, I don't know. I, I know you're a demon and I know, um, and I shouldn't really be talking to you, but fuck it. What else, what else do I have to give? And Imogen, like, just downs the rest of the apple juice. Just, ah, uh, ooh, maybe not that gesture, but you know <laughs> what I mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> and he's gonna, he's gonna nod sort of sympathetic. Um, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something that's true. And if you ever tell anybody else, I'm going to make you bleed out of your eyes. That goes for all of y'all who hear you. I am young. I am not an elder demon. And you know what happens to young demons? It hey, ain't pretty. I'll spare you the imagination. Do you know why we all want to be here? Because it ain't hell. Your church exists like everything in power exists to perpetuate itself. Power begets power. That's always how it's been. And now...
power usually doesn't have to scramble against itself in order to perpetuate itself. Something's fragmenting. Something's breaking down. Something might be broken in a much bigger way than anybody knows about. But I'll tell you this. I'm not going to let the sons of Adam get a foothold in this state. I'm not going to let the sons of Adam get a foothold anywhere near where I have operations. If I can help it, while I've got this body, while I've got this time here, while I've got my, what limited authority is allowed to me, I ain't going to let that shit happen. If the church is falling apart, you say, then sounds like it might be an excellent time for a couple of very clever people with bright and shining futures to consider what they would like to replace it with. But you didn't hear that from me. I'm the bad guy, remember? And he's going to get up and walk away. All of the color has drained from Imogen's face. Just gone. Completely pallid. Um, and she says nothing. Well, that was surprising. Uh... I, I think Ace can be overly dramatic sometimes, but um, it does sound like the, I mean, turmoil at the church, right? And with Sons of Adam roaming around, like, it doesn't seem like a good thing. Uh, but I wonder what he meant by that. I don't know. Personally, I, I, I would love to see something else in place of the church that's a little bit more accepting and, and um, a little less than than the current uh system because it's it's especially for anybody who's you know supernatural i don't know i'm curious soren what do you what do you think of all that the waitress has come by with all of your food by the way so you are all snacking sephir i assume has eaten an entire chicken <laughs> Soren has been surprisingly quiet during everything that Ace said. And he looks over at Jerome and then over at Imogen and says, if I'm being honest, I think everyone has their own agenda. The church has theirs. Ace has his. And so... I wouldn't bank on what he said either. Obviously, something is happening with the church. That's why you came to us, Imogen, to figure out what was happening with the archives and everything else. But I don't know if trusting a demon saying that it needs to be replaced with something else is anything other than setting up a new powerful force that's going to be misused as well. Just because the church mm. isn't what it could be doesn't mean we have to dismantle it entirely. And it doesn't mean that something else is better. Yeah. All right. I see what you're saying. I, I guess I agree with some of that, you know? Um, I don't, I, I think it might be a little... Maybe a little uh, to say that any any power is going to end up being um, just as bad, uh, but 
you're right. I I don't think everything would need to be like dismantled to make it better. Um, I mean, what did I, they say? Yeah, absolute I, I, power I think corrupts I corrupts absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't think any any of them should be. If if it is gone and something else, then I'm not willing to say it would be as bad. But you're right. Like there there doesn't have to be yet another uh like domineering system of oppression like the current churches. So. Yeah. Jerome sure, um, starts to just chew on his sandwich thoughtfully. Okay. Lauren looks over at Imogen and just asks them, what do you think about all of that? I mean, you say everyone has an agenda. I mean, that means so do we. And I don't know. I I know I just popped off at the mouth there, but maybe subconsciously my agenda is just to have some kind of answers found, some kind of resolution made so that we can be here to pick up the pieces of whatever damage is wrought from all of this. I don't know. I'm just tired of being closed off and siloed off from any form of anything the way we've been for so long. And I'm tired of getting it from the church. I'm tired of getting it from parents. I'm tired of getting it from everyone. So it's time that these butchers has come down. Oh yeah. Also, yes, Amber would love a sandwich. I'm fucking hungry. Yeah, sandwiches <laughs> yeah. would be great. Sandwiches it is are a great, sandwich. Though. It's a little early, but do we want to take a bio break or do we want to take a a No, I can wait. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> but definitely we're all getting sandwiches on our breaks. Um Heck yeah. So you guys finish up you have your you have your sandwiches. Ace did pay for those sandwiches, paid for everything um, up front. The waitresses there, um, you know, comes by, keeps filling up your coffee as long as you stay. If you order anything else, it's still on Ace's tab. Um, when you do go home, what do you all do? that Saturday night to wrap up your days. Or Jerome, you had something you wanted to talk to Imogen about before you guys. Yeah. Part. Yeah. yeah I, I'll definitely want to at least set up a, uh, like a time to go and search for the bones again. So, uh, so uh, Imogen, um, keep bringing this up, but like, I, I really need to find a, a good time to like go searching for the, for the missing bones again, you know, um, like it, it turns out it's like super important. Um, and, uh, uh, it's like my parents are, uh, really want me to find those. Um, so I don't know, is, is there any time that we could look around again or maybe talk to your dad or, or something? Cause like, mm -hmm. I know when we looked last time they weren't, we didn't, we didn't find some of them in your room anymore. I, sur I suppose, um, I suppose, um, after my parents are asleep, I can sneak you in. Uh, sure. I mean, that works for me. Like whenever, whenever we can do that's like soonest, that would be, that's yeah. fine. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, my parents are usually asleep by 1030. Um, if you want to, I'll, I'll sneak you in through my window. 
All right, Just cool. Then I'll go like I gotta drop this shit. stuff off. I don't I don't want to carry this like for you know yeah. I, I want to yeah. get this over to to Mike uh, as quickly as possible and uh, and then yeah. I can meet up with you again afterwards. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the stuff you're carrying, do you still have that wolf pelt? <laughs> Or no, you would have left it in your parents' car, in your mom's car. Yeah, it's like in the trunk. It's folded up in the trunk okay. of the car, like, you know, because we were on our way back. But, but yeah, right, right, I right. could probably still use a better shower than I had out in the, uh, out in the uh, mountains, but, but sure. It's true. It's true. You probably smell a lot like smoke. Um, yeah. um, okay. So you two are going to make that happen. Soren and Sefer. Are you guys going to be doing anything tonight? Sefer, are you going to be working on your project? Uh, I think Sefer is going to be working on their project. I think the only thing is, um, so what kind of reaction does Sefer get when they tell their parents about what happened? Right. Cool. Of course. So... I guess the question is, what do you say? Because when you get home, it's solidly, it's mid-afternoon now. It's not like late, but it's definitely like four or five o'clock. It's like before dinner, but not like a lot before dinner. Um, it's like three to four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and... Uh, so yeah, you're you go in, your parents are there, um, your mom's in the kitchen, your dad's like, Hey, did you have lunch? I hope you had lunch, because we just put lunch away. Uh I thought, yeah. I thought yeah. you were gonna be home ages ago. What's no, going sir. on? I oh I got I got I got lunch. Um I actually um need to uh talk to you guys about something. Um hmm? don't be mad. Uh I got uh, jumped on the way home. Um, oh my god! I so I don't know this for a fact. Um, so thank you. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah, your your mom is immediately like, like, oh my god, are you okay? What I'm, what I'm okay. what did they do? What did they do? I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm dead. I'm fine. Mostly, I when I was coming back from doc, from doctor doctor Thesiger's and. These guys were like creeping up on me in their car. And so I tried to see if I could lose them. I went to the mall thinking like they wouldn't like creep up on me or jump me with 20 people around. Um uh I, I was wrong. Um they 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 jumped me, but but um it was good because some of the other uh like some of the other guys from like like prayer group were there, uh, you know, so I was okay um they 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 went away um i might have hurt a couple of them um but also i didn't think of this but sorry imogen uh sorry they're they're also from prayer group um mm -hmm. they said that they think that maybe it was like sons of adam guys They, both of your parents... I had lunch, have, though. Both of your parents have been, like, again, freaking out, like, are you okay? Are you okay? Um, when you say, again, Sons of Adam, your mother shoots your father an absolutely acid look. And he goes white just all the blood drains from his face they they, they don't they don't up they don't operate in maryland they've they've never operated they've never operated in maryland i i don't i'll be honest i don't like i don't i don't know anything about about these guys i was just going off uh, imogen said that they they thought that they seemed like sons of adam guys uh I don't really know much about it. Imogen knows lots of things, though. So I was uh, kind of that that was just kind of what they were going off of. And I think that 
they're probably right if they think that. Uh, they, they, uh, no, that, that doesn't, that. And your, your mother, your, 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 he's, he's like, just kind of like sits down for a second and your mother looks at him and says again, that wasn't the deal. Was it? And he looks up at her and says, no, it wasn't. I don't know why they're here. If they're here, she, they must have been mistaken. They must have been mistaken. There's, there is no way. There is no way. Um, hey. Uh, sorry, Brendan is trying really hard not to smile. <laughs> sorry, this is a very serious moment. Brendan yep. is like, Brendan is cracking up for the awkwardness. Yep. Ah, sorry, and scene. Um, hey, hey, um, mom? Yeah? Yes? Uh, uh, dad? Dad? Hey, um, not, I just, um, I just kind of just want to ask a quick, um, follow-up question, um, like, since I kind of got, like, 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 a little bit mugged and all, um, what, what deal? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? What's that thing you're talking about? You, your dad, uh, looks like he's about to say something and then gives your mom like this pl a pleading look she rolls her eyes i you know was before this a nun and i was a hunter as well a church hunter your father also a church hunter. My sect of hunters was very directly managed by the church. Your father's was not. Your father's sect of hunters. And yet she gives him a look and he's just got his head in his hands. eventually spun off to become the Sons of Adam. And he, he says, actually, I want you to roll heart real quick for me. Rolling heart. What's that? Oh, no, that is. Hmm. That's not optimal stat for me. Nope. nope, nope, nope. Sefer, 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 Sefer can't can't win for losing the day. Oh no, you need to get need new dice. Would you yeah. roll? Uh, after penalties, a two. A two. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, that uh, that plus one forward's not gonna. Uh, no. no, nope. Oh, and anyway, that was uh, that was given to Soren. I mean, uh, I he... would I would have passed it along to Brendan if it would have helped. Yeah, no, no, I have I have I have been so far below the threshold of success this whole session. Mm -mm. Uh, he just sort of shakes his head and just says. They're not supposed to operate anywhere near me. I told them to stay away from me, and they agreed. And your mom gives a just sort of like looks at him and gives a little like, well, that's what happens when you make deals with assholes. Excuse my French. Pretty sure that was she English, mom. She pulls out her uh, rosary and says, oh, can it? I'm sorry. You're traumatized. Uh, she's like clicking, like clicking through uh, rosaries, and she says, "Okay, well, if that's what's happening, you you said you hurt them. How badly?" Um. So, 
I'm pretty sure I um, broke at least one of their arms in two places and also might have dislocated the shoulder. Um, they'll probably be fine, though. They'll probably be fine. Um, uh, another one, uh, I, I think I'm pretty sure uh, uh, nose is kind of gone. Um, pretty sure also maybe the rib situation less than ideal. But again, totally survivable. Totally survivable. I didn't kill. I didn't kill nobody. Okay. Well, well, that's that's probably for the best. Long term. Um. Admittedly, I didn't really see what see what the other guys did to people. It was kind of chaotic. I know you know guys in you know my, my my prayer group. You know they they I, they got involved. I don't want them to get involved. I was fine. I told them I was fine. They just like, you know, they got involved and they might have messed some people up, too. I wasn't really, really paying attention to how much they messed them up. I just like I just kind of know how much I messed up the guys that I messed up because I can't I can't not know that. I've never I should talk to Dr. Tesker about that. I've never messed someone up bad enough that I couldn't not know how badly I messed them up. I don't like knowing that. I'll tell you something. It's good that you don't like knowing that. It's not healthy to like knowing how much you messed somebody up. That's not supposed to be comfortable. She's still, again, clicking, clicking her rosary. She says, okay, okay. Your friends were there. They do they, but you you your friends still don't know. You the for the prayer group still doesn't know, right? Know what? Know what? But you're a homunculus. That's still that's still that's still secret, right? Nobody else knows that, right? There is Sefer. a long, there is a long silence as Sefer sort of just kind of like looks at their shoes. Sefer. It, it came, and I'm sorry, it came, it came up that we had this whole conversation about like trust and stuff. And it just like, I don't know. I, it just, I was I've been keeping it a secret for so long. I never had like, like friends before. And friends like tell each other things, right? Friends tell each other things. This is this is your dad, sort of from his from his chair, looking at the floor, looking more ashamed than you've ever seen him look in his entire life. Well, we were worried about that, but um, This place isn't safe. Where do we, we gotta, we gotta figure out a new place to go. And your mom looks at him and says, no, you've got to sort your shit. You've got to sort your shit. You, this is you. This is you. And he's like, I fucking know it's me. <laughs> uh, and like, they go back into, into their, like, uh, sort of squabbling until okay so i'm gonna go upstairs you yes go we will thank you for telling us i uh we will figure something out we will figure something out um uh, this we will make sure this doesn't happen again Um, when you go upstairs, you hear them downstairs. You can hear them fighting, um, in that way that, that like whisper fighting where it's like, I can't believe they're, they're, they, Par they, know. they parents always think they're being quiet when they do that, but it, man, it carries it gosh, does. gosh, gosh, does it carry? It carries and the vibe carries. God. Oh, yeah, gosh, like through the vents. Through the vents. Man. And 
also they know the range of your hearing it's not super possible you know it's 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 sweet you know what it's sweet they're making the attempt i guess yeah um Unless you are actively trying to listen. No, to them, no, I think Sefer is out. actively trying to not listen. I think Sefer yeah. is throwing themselves into their studies uh, in, in, in an attempt to to tune it out. Go ahead and roll for your research project. All right. That's a that's a mind roll. Okay, all right. Come on. This, this, this is or it, I guys. Guess this it's, is... I guess it's a roll. You can tell me how you're trying to roll. I think mind makes the most sense. I think, I think so, too. Yeah, all right. Buddy. Brendan, this you know, isn't possible. This is bad. This isn't statistically possible. No, this is this is extremely bad. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I the, these these dice normally these 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 dice are normally good boys, but yeah, no, they're having dice jail. They're having they're having a day, or you know, whom's amongst us. You are finding it really hard to tune out the the argument going on downstairs, especially um, uh, your your mother's voice, Sister Mary's voice sometimes gets really. She has a tendency to get squeaky when she's mad. Um, and you're finding it just, it's hard to tune it out and focus. A line does catch your eye though and you don't know you're you're pretty sure you, you get you get kind of stuck on it a little bit because you're pretty sure it's referring to some salt like some kind of solvent and maybe you just have solvents on the brain you did just uh uh grab some aqua regia uh precursor from mm, ace yeah yeah but, you know, I mean, I mean, hey, probably, probably, probably better that I sort of like started this whole conversation off with a hot topic. Uh, so they didn't think like. You've been drinking. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, and hey, you didn't even have to tell them that you talked with the demon of addiction today. No, nope, definitely. One hundred percent just sort of glossed, glossed over that. Cruised right past it like a champ. You. You get stuck on a line because it's weird and it seems out of place. The line is, um, by this method, all things can be unmade. And you're looking at the previous paragraphs and you're not seeing like a method there at all like you're just sort of seeing like it, it you're not maybe you're not translating it right because this is again it's alchemist scribbles yeah heavily redacted alchemist scribbles um but yeah that's where that's where you're getting stuck okay and soren what are you what do you do with your Saturday night? Soren goes directly to his room when they get back. Um, probably does leave when it's dinner time, because otherwise that would be suspicious. But spends most of the time that he's in his room just pacing back and forth and back and forth. And I think it's after dinner that Zeke can very much tell Soren is trying to make a decision. Um, he's not talking to himself or to Zeke as he's pacing, but there is clearly something that he is debating doing. What is your debate? I think I think I should go to church and I think I should confess. Confess what? 
confess what what I did today, Zeke. What I did to that man. You could have done much more. Yeah, I don't like hearing that. I he attacked I, your friend. Though your friend did not seem to need much help, they are powerful. I mean, obviously it was wrong that those men did what they did. It was horribly wrong, but what I did was horrible, too. You tackled a man into a wall so hard that it left an imprint of his body. Yes. But he did not die. No, he didn't die. Or at least he wasn't dead then. I mean, he will die eventually. That's sort of how stuff works. Why do you feel guilty for this? Why do you feel guilty for defending your friend? don't feel guilty for defending my friend. I, I don't think that was wrong. I feel guilty for the way I did it. What do you wish you would have done? I don't know, tackled him, but not into a wall? Tied him up? I... Something like that. Neutralized him so he wasn't a threat, but not... Not the way I did. You are frightened of your own body. Of your own self. You fear that which makes you strong. You fear strength. Why embrace the strength of a saint and deny the strength provided? Because as a saint, I wasn't hurting anyone. I was helping them. If you still believed yourself a saint, would you not have tackled that man? Would you have changed your would that have changed your actions at all? Soren is quiet for a very, very long moment. And then says I don't know. Tackling that man wouldn't have felt very saint-like. No, maybe it would have. Maybe it would have. Of course, there have been plenty of saints. 
who have used physicality. Bryce himself whipped the money lenders in the temple, I believe. So no, Zeke, maybe it's not about whether I'm a saint or not. Not about whether I would whether I would have tackled that man or whether I wouldn't have. It's about the fact that before I don't think I would have liked it. And I did. If it brings you satisfaction, confess. I don't think it will, though. If you are intent upon feeling guilt, you will feel guilt. That is beyond my power to change. But I don't understand why you would feel guilt. You did what any man would do. All of your friends threw themselves into the fight? Why not enjoy that you were merely more effective? Because I never thought causing someone else pain would be something that would give me satisfaction. But I think you're right. I don't think confessing it's going to do anything other than probably get me in a lot of trouble and add shame to the mix, so let's not do that. If you call on me, when you are in danger, I can add significantly greater power to any punishment you deem necessary to mete out. That is what I am for. That is what you are for. And is that all I'm for at this point, Zeke? Hurting people that need to be hurt? What more is there? I used to think there was a lot more. But maybe I was wrong. Zeke is going to sort of come over and curl up, sort of sit at your feet. Um, not... Not touching you, not like rubbing up against you or anything like that, just sort of like curling up next to you and isn't going to say anything more. Soren lets a few moments pass, but then he does open his arms for Zeke to jump up into them. And he does.
and we're going to pull back. The camera's going to pull back from that scene and then back over to sort of back over to another place in town where an answering machine, an old fashioned tape answering machine picks up a call. And we hear the voice of Father Chapek, Sefer's dad, say, Anthony, we need to talk. You know where to find me. The line clicks shut. We're going to take a break. Yes, they're called tortas. It's true. That's so it's true. true. Tortas are good. Tortas are good. I would but also one, suggest one that. Might, one might. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to let you go. I was going to say one might something case the R sandwiched between the layers i'm just saying one might consider that to be a sandwich i would you know, say though, <laughs> you know though i feel like there's a case to be made here where they are an unsealed dumpling because it's all one wrapper now an un unsealed dumpling is not a dumpling so so no there's uh, those there's dumplings a, there's have a, to be sealed no there's a type of there's a type of dumpling and i saw kenji I making I, I saw kenji <laughs> making them so i know they're real uh, and, Where's Kenji? Yeah, I'll argue Kenji. You are, yeah, go, yeah, go argue with Kenji. <laughs> argue with, argue with Kenji about food. Uh, at, at, the, at, hmm. the, at, at the at the risk of 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 uh, getting into Socratic sandwich dialogue, uh, I, I, I I contend that uh, torta torta is sandwich. Torta is delicious sandwich. Quesadilla also sandwich. Delicious sandwich. There we go. There we All go. Right. All right. Uh, it's also a delicious sandwich. Is is Welcome a sub back. is a sub a sandwich? Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, I'm done. I'm if, done. If a hot dog is a sandwich, <laughs> then yes. Uh, uh, welcome back to your favorite channel for Socratic sandwich uh, discussions. Uh, that's what we do here. We debate sandwiches and um, taxonomy. That's how we do. Um, where we left off, we just had a heart to heart with, between Soren and Zeke, and now at Imogen's house. Imogen, were, you got home in kind of with your, with your boxes, I assume Jerome, you probably helped them bring their boxes in uh sure yeah i uh yes if i was invited to i definitely did um you probably got home and your parents were your dad might have been there your mom yeah your mom probably your both your parents probably would have been there but they would have just sort of been like hey how how was your day Um, Sorry, you asked me that while I was um, chewing. It's it's <laughs> leftover. It's leftover for my time being uh, waitstaff at a restaurant. I have a uh, a preternatural sense for when people are about to take bites of food, and then I ask them questions. Hey, Brendan, how you doing? No, you're so valid. <laughs> yeah, it's just a it's just a thing. Anyway, so yeah, your your parents sort of like, hey, how you doing? And kind of are. They're kind of doing their own thing. They're not really super focused on you unless you bring yourself to focus. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm going to take advantage of this moment and be like, uh, no, just, um, went to school, brought, I just, I'm, I, I have a member of the prayer group with me, um, just for just helping me with some homework for a second. And then, uh, he'll, he'll be out of our hair. Oh, okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, I'm Jerome. Hi, Jerome. I'm 
Imogen's mom, have a... Hi, know. Imogen's mom. Leave the door open when you're studying. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Imogen's just like, looks at Jerome and then just... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, of course, mother. Uh, I, yes, mother, I will leave the door open. Um, talk to y'all later. Love yep. you. <laughs> yep. And so you guys go upstairs to or Imogen's room. Um, you've got like two of these boxes, two of these file boxes full of papers. They are heavy, um, but um, you are pretty able to, it, it's not too, too tough for you guys to wrangle them upstairs between the two of you. Um, do you just drop them off and go, or are you going to try to search, Jerome? Oh, yeah. I mean, hey, uh, hey, Imogen, uh, I mean, while I'm here, oh. can we can we look around for the for the bones again? Uh well, since I have to leave the door open, um, she, like, looks over, like, out of her bedroom and, like, down the stairs to make sure, like, no one's coming or, like, she's, she's like, uh, yeah, why don't, why don't, um, I'll keep a lookout for anything and then you can, you can, you can look. Uh. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. Um, Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I just. Yeah. I did. Are your parents gonna have a an issue with searching for something in your in your room? Like I. I don't. Like I don't. I don't know what we're trying to avoid here. Like I don't want to. No, I don't want to mess anything uh, up. Like, uh. No. It's um. My mom tends to hover when she can. And uh. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll I'll just yeah. I'll just start looking around, uh, see if I can if I can find them. Um, I mean, last time, but I'm hoping you know they had to go somewhere, right? So they they're either here yeah. or like oh yeah yeah. Uh, so I start searching around, and what's the best role for that? Is it going to so, be mind again? <laughs> well, so the last time you were here, you sort of tried searching by normal methods at this point you have been inducted you yourself are oh. missing you yourself are missing oh, right. a rib. um you are tied to that community much more powerfully than you were before i think you could make a let it out roll about it ooh Ooh. All right. Let's uh let's do it. I'm looking for where's my let it out move? I just want to read it real quick. Yeah, let it uh, out. The let it out move. When you let out the power within you roll with spirit. On a hit, choose one and mark corruption. On a ten plus, ignore the corruption or choose a second from the list. The list is take plus one forward on your next roll, extend your senses, supernatural or otherwise, that would probably be the thing you were doing, frighten, intimidate, or impress your opposition, or take definite hold of something vulnerable or exposed. And I would let you do one or the, there's a couple of those that might make sense for you here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I found that as well. Cool. Um, I'm going to, yeah, extending your senses, uh, I think, sounds just right. Um so I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of like. Do, do we have a good like impetus as to why like Jerome would? Let me think about this. To like think to do this, something he's never done before. Yeah. Um, I guess just out of like, right? Like he really wants to find this. Really want like needs to get this uh, back for both his mother and and Ivy. Uh, and I'm sure the other bones are are important to, uh, to somebody. Um, you so also like he's under just... like a a lot of pressure and you just got back from a literal magic ritual inducting you into a magic society yeah yeah so i'm gonna yeah i'm just gonna kind of go for it here so i feel that like i'm gonna try and like spread myself out see if i can like anything here like resonates with 
with me and uh, being part of this community. Okay, so here we go. Oh no, ah, uh, that's a three. <laughs> uh, and is there a modifier on that? Let's see here. Or is that just oh uh, spirit? Spirit, there it is. Okay. And my spirit zero. So cool. Three. So it's a three. If you were gonna get it, how would you how would you how do you think Jerome's power would manifest? Would you be uh, what, what, would, you, what yeah. would he be trying to do here? He's trying to kind of think of what his so he's seen his parents do some things um before uh and he's kind of picked up a little bit of that and i'm going to say that because it's like this this physical connection um that there might be like bolt in this um and i'm gonna say uh oh man so it'd be something maybe kind of like ritualistic um like maybe he he like bites bites into like his finger to draw blood and like draws a diagram with it on his other palm and uses that like a spiritual compass to try and point him toward where the bones would be via like a feeling that he would get from it maybe heat uh right um like as he faces towards something uh he can feel it getting hotter um and uh and yeah, so that's what he that's what he does, and he just does this kind of on instinct, um, unless he wanted to bring like I, uh, but like this would be like something akin to what he's seen his like say his mother do when she was summoning uh, Ivy via the mirror um, and needed some blood in the uh, in the and what was it ink in the in the, like the pool in front of the yeah. in front of the mirror. So yeah, usually your mom used a, a lancet, um, but in times ah, right. of it uh, but in times of need you've got your t your teeth are right there <laughs> uh, uh i mean he's also doing this like with his back to imogen so he didn't want to necessarily give away he has yet to he wasn't there when the rest of the group kind of had this honest moment with each other about mm -hmm. like uh their supernatural uh, -ness. um so he's still like uh self-conscious about that and keeping it close to his chest so like he doesn't want to turn around and be like, you know, hey, Imogen, do you have anything I could cut my finger open with? Uh, right. So he's just he's just going for it. So, uh, okay. yeah, there's a, a no, he's he's not he's not doing that. He's it, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. He, he's not going to turn around and say that because he wants to keep this all quiet. So so you're facing oh. the other way. And uh, and Jerome is like biting. It's yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you above the table as Amber, there is a Swiss Army knife um on imogen's desk oh so you would uh -huh. see that would you would use that, that all right or I'll would use you it. okay uh, I am... it, unless there's some added uh i, I can just say no he's gonna flub this anyway right he goes for the swiss army knife maybe biting would oh. be something more personal and would have worked better but that's not what he does so he goes for the knife yeah i'm going to uh Image. I, 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 here's what I'm going to make you do. Here's here's how this is going to work. The flub here, because this is interesting. Amber, go ahead and roll. Figure someone out, and Bedlam, go ahead and roll. Keep your cool. This is a <laughs> contest. This is contested. Figure someone out. Yep. So that's with mind. Okay. That is a nine for me. Okay. Um, and Jerome, you keep your cool. Okay. Yeah. I was taking a look at because I also have the tainted move of don't look at me. Um, but I'm Ooh, not. Actually, I'm not directly misleading them. 
kind of are. But it is kind of You're... fitting here. Yeah, <laughs> that you allows me to roll. Bloodletting in with... their room, so yes. Roll with heart instead. Like of literally, heart. don't look at me. Please don't look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, that's... Okay. So, so I'm gonna roll with heart instead. Okay. Um, that's the only real difference here. Seems reasonable. But Jerome is a lot of heart. Do it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, I also plus two, so I got a five. I failed either way. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> this is not. We got been some a good rolls game. today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these have been really great rolls today. Both. It's fine. Failures from interesting. Brendan and Bedlam, the B Squad. <laughs> uh, the um, oh, I guess that has like an actual meaning, doesn't it? Um, yeah, you are completely unable to hide this. Uh, it. I'm going to say Jerome literally like makes a noise when he cuts himself. It hurt more than he was expecting. He went deeper than he thought he was going to. And like, okay. yeah, it's like, ah, and then Imogen would probably react to that. So, it, oh, yeah, no, so sorry. Uh, I am in email hell right now. I'm so sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, Imogen goes, oh, 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 shit. Oh fuck! Uh, are are you okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, just fine. Um, um no big deal. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I, I, I mean, do, do I see that he's bleeding? Yeah, yeah. You see that he's bleeding, and you see um, the sigil half drawn into his palm. Um, do you need a? band-aid for that or maybe some isopropyl alcohol um or neosporin or like a priest what the fuck um uh i mean i'd take a band-aid can i trust you to not bleed all over my stuff in my bedroom while i get this yeah yeah for you yeah, I'll be. He's continuing to draw the diagram on his hand. I'll be fine. Sorry, that was really aggressive. Obviously, it's been a very contentious day. Um, okay. Yes. Sorry. I'll go get you a band aid. I'll get you some Thanks. neosporin too. I'll be right back. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And <laughs> as Imogen just toddles off to the bathroom, <laughs> almost as he just carries on. <laughs> Almost as soon as they leave, oh. you get the feeling in your hand pulling you. It's 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 heat, but it's also almost like pulling. Awesome. And if you uh, is it in the room? It's not in the room. It's out of the room. If you go out of the room, you see it is in. It's pulling you toward what you suspect is Imogen's parents' bedroom, the doors to which are closed. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, can I see, is, is Imogen like in an upstairs bathroom here? Uh, can I see where she, where she went? It's like down, yeah, it's like down the hall. Yeah, the bathroom, I'm, I'm just gonna say the bathroom is like in between uh, their room and the bedroom. Their room in the bedroom. Okay. Okay. Uh, I go. I go over. Um, as they're as they're rummaging through the uh the cabinet, right to to groundage. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm like, um, uh, yeah. I guess it would be good to to stop bleeding. Uh, but also I think I know where the bones went, and it, they might be in your parents' room. Yeah, when she comes back with everything, she says, "My, my parents' room. What the fuck?" Uh, yeah, I I have feeling. I have a really strong feeling. Uh, I can't really explain it. Um, but I think I think the bones might be in your in your parents' room. Is it possible that they uh pick them up like after? figure was broken i uh, um 
does it st- do, do Imogen is like a little baffled like this caught her so off guard like um and then you remember- do you know where in my parents room uh if he's like looking down and he's like if if I went in there I'd be able to find out where um, uh okay um uh sh- okay sure yeah um i'm i'm sure my my dad just came in and just wanted to fuck with me a little bit you know uh yeah no i'm sure that was just my dad just being my dad um yeah for sure um Jerome does not means. pursue that thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, um, I'll just keep looking out to make sure my parents don't see a strange boy in their bedroom. <laughs> and she does, like, add that laugh in there to be like, what a way to yeah, meet somebody for the first time. Probably be, uh, yeah, that's probably a good thing. I'll, I'll hurry, I'll hurry. Um, yeah. And Jerome makes his way over to the, uh, to the parents' bedroom door um, and, and opens it as quietly as he can uh, um, and goes in. Okay. You make it in and your the little sigil you have in your hand keeps tugging you forward um, and you see it, it pulls you over to uh, there's a big like queen size bed Two end tables, lamps. Um, one of them has a uh, a Bible and a book of um, like a um, a book on like church architecture, like a like a book on um, uh, kind of a just like a little nonfiction book on uh, uh, architecture and churches. And the other side has uh, just a couple, like, magazines and some, um, uh, a, copy of a book that you haven't seen very often, um, uh, a, a book on, sort of like contemporary criticism, contemporary literature, uh, contemporary religious criticism uh, that is sort of on the other side of the bed. And in that drawer, in the that end table, when you open the drawer, you see three bones. You see um... a tiny piece of almost shell-like bone a longer foot bone um and you see another um another like uh another one another bone similarly okay. something small. uh i pick them up um and get them into like one of my pockets as like quickly um and also i do take note of that book because like church criticism is an interesting thing to find uh here um and also like uh okay so that he closes a drawer i close the drawer mm-hmm. and uh and i kind of like see if i can reach out and feel anything else like are there any more in that area or were they all together or like am i able to does it seem like i found them you want all? to push your luck yeah i think i would actually end up pushing my luck Yes. You uh, you already failed this roll once, so uh, I'm going to go ahead did. and say okay. that okay. you failed this roll once, and I gave it to you, which means consequences are coming. Oh sure, yeah, I did mark uh, corruption as well. Good, yeah. good. Um, um, the if you push your luck here. and roll again, if you fail. The consequences will be immediate and large. Ah, uh-huh. so okay. Um, uh, that is the choice before you. Uh, I well, hmm, okay. 
like I don't need to I feel like I don't need to drive more power into this necessarily do maybe like want to leave the house and then from outside be like see if from outside I could I could feel anything uh, like getting further away from the situation uh, I'm, gonna, I'm I'm gonna tell you now that once you have those bones in your hand the spell if you don't pump power into it the spell is going to flicker and die Got it. because again you failed that roll yeah that previous okay role. so oh, i thought it was oh i thought on let it out it was succeed but mark corruption no that's on a hit you you succeed but mark corruption that's on a seven plus oh. on a failure oh. i get to decide what happens oh right so okay i, I misread am, that oh oh, uh, oh. I am, uh, uh, so you do mark corruption. Yes, but you are also being generous uh, by giving me the the actual, uh, it did I, in fact work. Maybe yep. I sh oh man, it, it would be a terrible idea to push my luck, but I also feel that, uh, uh, do it. I almost the Rammies. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. No, Rammies. <laughs> Look, I already have to clean up this mess. The worst that could happen. Uh, What's I don't know. You tell me, GM. <laughs> what is the worst that could happen? No, the, uh, uh, I could. This is the fuck around stage. This is the fuck around stage. Oh man! Now look, I already have to clean up this this information spill with Imogen. Uh, she saw me drawing on my hand in blood. I don't know the point yet. He's. I don't think he's going to push it for this. Uh, oh, okay. I think he's going to bring the three bones back and then find out whether or not there's any more missing because that's an easy one to solve bring yeah. back and that they're going to be like oh no look this is not it and then i'll go i'll go find some more okay so Trump's going to be the pragmatist and not necessarily put his luck in this case okay uh, plenty of uh, other opportunities to to f around even more so um this is an option for folks if you uh do ever if you ever fail a role but you really want you really want it a you can say hey gm fuck me up give me the thing and make it worse uh which is an option uh but you can also push your luck which could get you the thing and which could get you the thing without me making it worse but if it if you fail that second roll i will make it worse i, I will make it worse um if uh, if I hadn't already been rolling very badly, I, I think I might have been more more inclined to do this. But yeah, and I know that that doesn't mean here. It's all random. But but yeah, we 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 craft narratives from random numbers. That's that's what we do as a species. <laughs> and that's literally what we're doing here. True. All right. But I do Excel. need to talk to Imogen. You do. Because I need to, I think, call in a a debt your Cat. as this is happening your you see your mom down at the bottom of the stairs sort of looking up you see her check to see if your bedroom door is open kind of nod and then go back out um imogen you hear your dad talk your mom and dad talking and your dad says Oh, I, there was a thing I was reading. I wanted to show it to you. Um, I'll be I'll be right back. Uh, and he starts doing that. He starts a uh, uh, dad climbing the stairs, you know, where he's doing the hop hop thing, taking the stairs two oh, at a time, no, being kind dad. of a goof. <laughs> and he's just like, uh, uh, right. And he sort of gets up and turns the corner, like right as Jerome pulls the door shut, and he sort of. Hey guys, hanging oh. out in front of the bathroom. I... Oh my God, dad. I'm so, oh, sorry. I didn't mean oh. to use the Lord's name in vain. Wait, that's um, the bathroom over there? Uh, okay, sorry. I, it's... my first time in here, I was going to the wrong room. Oh yeah, no, Jerome just cut his hand. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, so, yeah, I... yeah it... we, we were just He shows sure the one that... hand, but not the other. Yeah. Uh, we were just getting him cleaned up so he didn't bleed all over the carpet. You know how mom is about the carpet. Were you guys doing yeah, ritual I'm really blood sorry about that. No. Oh, what now? 
Come on, guys. Are you dead? You wouldn't invite me? Come on. <sighs> he, 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 like, like pats you on the shoulder and says, get some Neosporin on that guy. You know, that's oh. not that's not safe. <laughs> Imogen holds up the tube, like you know, I've got it prepared, Dad. You're Jerome's trying to figure out if he's joking or not. Is he joking? Is he not joking? Is he? Is this normal here? What's happening right now? He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> Hi, anxious. I'm confused. Dad. Jer- <laughs> Jerome just goes uh, into the bathroom and goes along with it because he's just not sure, having basically just done a blood ritual. Um, so, oh yeah, you know, Dad, you know how um, immersive lessons can be these days uh, with experimental. You know, some some teachers want to go above and beyond to make sure we, yeah. Imogen. Uh, Imogen is in that, like, I'm covering up so much, so I'm just going to over-explain and give information overload, like like she just did with yeah. A's. <laughs> yeah. And Imogen's dad's like, Im, it's going to be okay. You're not in trouble. He's not in trouble. If you, if you, if you, you take a deep breath and don't make me suspicious. <laughs> Jerome, Jerome is shaking his head, but but uh, he is also quickly has his hands under the water while while this conversation is yeah. happening. And he does sort just of to get that. He does glance over. He's like, "Geez, you bled a lot. You all There's right, a lot kid? of blood. Yeah, I, in that body. Uh, I I I had a lot for lunch and a bunch of coffee. I don't know. Uh, is that does that make you bleed more? <laughs> I am not a medical doctor. I would not know. Okay, it Dad. seems all right now. But like, it's not so bad. Well, I'm sorry that the first time you come to my home, you injure yourself. That's not the kind of hosts we want to be. But, uh, uh, you, you, you stay safe. Stay safe, kids. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be more careful, uh, you know. Sorry, I, I'm sorry if I got any blood anywhere. That's fine. Uh, M, you know where the carpet cleaner is? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yep, got it. Yep. yep, yep. And he'll go into the room and leave you two. You know, goes in, grabs one of the magazines off the end table and goes downstairs. I keep washing my hand uh, and until I get all the the blood off of it and um, to Imogen for uh, for the neosporin and the and the band aid. Like she like pats like she roots like she passes it over and she's like, "What the fuck? What the fuck? What happened?" Uh, I found the I found the bones. Uh, they were in the they were in a table drawer in there, um, like an end table. Uh, I don't know which side. Is, but it was the. They had this book on criticizing the church, like on top of it, or critiques. I I can't remember the name of it, but uh, but uh, it had the the drawer had the three of the three of the bones in it. So I hope I hope this is all of them. Um, I'm gonna go. I gotta return them to my parents and find out. Is this my dad's side of the bed? Well, because my mom could have also been reading that, so that's why I was. Yeah, it's it's true. It's true. Um, you would probably figured out because the magazines he grabbed were from that side of the bed from that table because he had been reading them and then he wanted to show yeah uh or something oh okay um um so <clears throat> so, so maybe not mention to anybody that i that i drew on my hand with with blood um no. that would be really cool um Jerome wants to cash in uh, a debt because uh, Imogen owes him so much, right? Sure. What, like three debts or something like that? It was yeah. ridiculous. Uh, I think so I'm definitely cashing yeah. in one of them. You, I need you to. I need you to not mention this to to anybody. Oh. Uh, 
Nope, I'm definitely not telling anybody that you held a bloodletting ritual in my bedroom. That well, I, I mean, know, I know teenagers are meant to do things in secret in their bedroom, but I think bloodletting ritual is actually worse than like sex. So yeah, I I could see that from a point of view. Sure. Yeah. Jerome is 14. His voice 100% cracks when he says, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess I can see that. Yeah. I forgot I, he was yeah, 14. I, I forgot he was 14. Yeah, he's I'm 17. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's Fuck. younger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. I GM Fiat, you've been failing enough roles. Your voice cracks as soon as you say that. Yeah. Jer- Jerome's usually pretty cool. He's not cool right now. <laughs> Yeah, go, right. go home to your parents. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I gotta party. get these back. Um, that was aggressive. Also, I'm still carrying like a couple hundred dollars of cocaine on me. But anyway, so because uh, <laughs> we went there immediately after afterward, right? I haven't had time to go drop it off with Mike yet. We're still carrying the boxes, right? So anyway. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot you were carrying cocaine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, anyway, Amber said um, that. I'll Amber said you... that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, fantastic yeah. either way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Jerome. Uh. Uh. All right, Amber. Uh. uh sorry, Imogen. I. Uh. Thank you. Um. Yeah. I hope this is all of it. Uh. I'll let you know if it's not because I. I still have to make sure I find all of them. Um. Yeah. And uh, thank you for keeping that quiet uh and i gotta i really got to go so luck yeah. with your uh research um with the boxes uh yeah. so um okay but okay. he goes down the stairs and like quickly waves by to the parents uh and oh. tries to get out the front door before the dad makes any other jokes about awkwardness uh yeah okay bye uh, nice to meet you bye uh art do you want to stay for dent <laughs> and he's off um i'm gonna say he goes home first before dropping off the the drugs with uh with mike um i don't know if you want to dive into that right now or jump over to somebody else but that's where jerome's at okay so i will say that um dropping off the cocaine is easy like that that winds up not taking any time at all um you basically you've this is not your that's not your first rodeo so you'll go home first and when you do that it's not going to take up a bunch of time when you go home and talk to your parent and see your parents um they're sort of unpacking from the trip um they're sitting on the couch together sort of relaxing they're very um um They seem like they're in a good mood, Um, you know? Uh, So when you come in, they're like, hey, how are you guys? How are you doing? Are you surprised to find them in a in such a relaxed uh, um, sort of situation, given the the whole phone thing and and whatnot? But I guess uh, but I guess it was a good weekend in between. So uh, anyway, Mm -hmm. Um, hey, mom, I uh, I think I. uh, I think I found the the bones. I I went back to Imogen's and uh, I searched there uh, in a way, and and then ended up finding them. Her dad had them in his drawer, which was really weird, but um, bizarre. I I kind of uh, let me uh, I I I used I cut my finger. And and use the blood to make a diagram on my hand, and I did this before with some other stuff, sort of. But it was also kind of instinct. Um, uh, I don't know if that's normal, but it led me to the bones, um, and it was pretty cool. That's really really great. Uh, your mom says, and your 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 dad says, you've got it. You yeah. got it. Yeah. This that's that's the you know, that's the power that we get from this, you know? This ability we can we can access it, we can 
uh, we, we can do whatever it is we want to do. It makes us strong. It makes us different. Uh, and now you have access to it, too. I'm really proud of you. And you used it for the best uh -huh. thing. You used it to get these back. That's so good. That's so good on you. Oh, thanks, Dad. Uh, yeah, I felt really good. So, um, I, okay, I, I we got to make sure. Is this all of them? Uh, is this like I? I think that this one definitely looks like its mom. But like, was that was that all of them? I don't know um, how many were missing. Um, I, she, she says, uh. Well, I other than my own, I don't really know how many of them, how many others were missing. Um, we'll know when we, uh, uh, we'll talk to Tia while she's still in town, um, and uh, um, she'll have a better idea than we will. So, I'll, oh great, I'll give her, okay. I can give her a call now. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. Thanks, Mom. Um. So yeah, the, you go, you do the drop off. It's a relatively normal evening. Your mom says that Tia will be by to check things out um, in another couple days. Um, there's apparently big things afoot. Sunday morning comes. You guys had a heck of a day. Sunday is a day of rest. Everybody goes to church, except Jerome. Except on this morning, in the Grimpley household, there is a different kind of chaos. Penny does not wake up that morning. She does not wake up when people try to wake her up. Ambulances are called. She is, doctors are summoned in. She's taken to a hospital. Her parents go there and they ask you, Soren, to watch after the kids. And uh, Dandelion and Kibo are both just like wide-eyed. Dandelion is looking, Porkchop is looking really shut down. Uh, Dandelion is looking freaked out. And Kibo is too young to know what's happening, but keeps kind of like... Um, uh, kind of locked into their two-year-old human form, which is strange for them, and kind of is just holding Dandelion's hand really tight. And they ask you if you can, you know, take the kids to church, see, just just try to make this as normal as possible, as normal as possible. We're sure everything's going to be fine. And Soren says that he can, of course, because he wants to be helpful. He is completely panicked because well over the past few, you know, weeks slash months being there, he's gotten a bit more used to being around the younger kids. He was an only child. He had no experience navigating any of this. Uh, and so he is doing his best at the best of times, and that is not in an emergency situation like this. Give me a straight luck roll. <laughs> Give me a just a straight 2d6. Uh, four. Dope. <laughs> we love it. We love to see it. So things devolve immediately. Uh you uh, uh kibo is howling um dandelion has gotten into the cereal uh and is like you're not sure if he's eating it or if he's like using it in some weird 
like game that he's playing with himself it is levitating uh pork chop meanwhile has turned on the basement tv as loud as possible and you're just like completely beside yourself trying to figure out what to do it's so loud it's so noisy and there's a knock at the door You open it, and it is, by the grace of God, Estelle. Soren is so overstimulated, much as I felt overstimulated just hearing that description of all of the noise. And it's just like, oh, hi, hi, everything's not fine. Everything is not fine. Um, Sit down. Go make yourself. Go make yourself some tea. Make yourself a drink. Let me handle this. Ah, uh, and she like walks in and kind of takes over. Ah, uh, she goes downstairs. She she starts with with Kibo. Just kind of like picks him up. Ah, uh, and. Uh, like picks him up, sort of shushes him, gives him a gives him a, a cup of juice. Um, she goes over to Daniel and says, "Pick all those things up." And I don't think the Grimpleys let you levitate things either. You know better than that, Dandelion. Rude, but does as he's told. Downstairs, then she goes downstairs to sort out. Uh, uh, pork chop who as as she opens the basement door you hear it's a news program uh going um or a like a commercial for a news program it's sunday morning so it's almost like all services but this is like the commercial for the the evening news like tune in tonight as we see uh uh let me see here uh, and they're sort of listing off the headlines, and you hear them say, Saint of Peace or Saint of War? Saint Soren says, Step off. And you say, uh, You hear a uh, uh, Tonight at Tonight at five. And Estelle goes downstairs, and you hear her telling him to wrap it up, turn it down, that's not okay, so on and so forth. Soren 100% dropped the mug of tea that he was making, and it just shattered on the floor. Yep. <sighs> Stell comes back upstairs, looking very serious. She says, We'll talk about that later. Right now, we're going to go for normal, right? We're going to go to church. We're going to get these kids to a nice, normal place, and then we're going to talk about that. And... We'll, we'll talk about, we'll talk about everything. We'll, we'll talk. Okay. Wait, what, what do you mean about everything? She sort of pauses and, and looks at the kids and just says like, We'll, we'll talk. Do you want to roll to figure someone out? I would really not love to, given how I've been rolling, but I'm going to do it, because I, why this not? Is, <laughs> this has not been a great game. It's really too bad this game does not give you anything for yeah, failing. Yeah, anything for failing. God if, we, God, if we could fail forward, we would be, we'd be streets ahead. So good. Okay. Alas. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, that is miraculously an eight. Ooh, okay. So you get to ask. You hold two and they hold one on you. So you can ask two questions. So, I mean, I think what Soren cares about in this moment is, I think the two questions are going to be, what does Estelle worry might happen? And how could Soren get Estelle to tell him what is on her mind? I'll answer that first one first because it's it's obvious. She's not trying not to freak out the younger kids. The other thing is when she she gives you that significant look um and looking at the other kids and you She's worried she's going to have to move you. She's worried she's going to have to move you to another another foster setting if this is uh, if this is as bad as it could be. If the Grimpleys aren't able to do this because they're caring for you know their child, then. They're going to have to find a new place to send kids. But she doesn't want to say that, obviously, in front of these other children, these younger kids. Um, so that's, uh, that's what you get. And that, I mean, is definitely enough that Soren isn't going to push it and just nods and says, all right, uh, what, what do you need me to do to get us out of here and... Um, do you know where the kids' shoes are? Do you know where can we, uh, and sort of starting to pull together the house. And you've seen this house, you're, you're able to kind of get everybody out the door. It's a lot more chaotic than it usually is. Or maybe it's just that you're part of the chaos now. And previously, you'd always been a little bit outside of the chaos, only kind of dragged in when, um, uh, kind of unwillingly. But you all make it to church. Um, the Warwicks also. Does your dad go to church still or does he stay home, Imogen? Oh, yeah. No, my dad does not go to church. Okay. Oh, you and your mom show up. Um, Sefer, that morning in your household is really awkward. Um, your, your parents are still clearly like mad at each other or your mom is mad at your dad. Uh, and he's like got that hang dog look where it's like, he's feeling guilty for something. But they're also doing the we are going to be normal thing. And um, which is a phrase that you definitely heard your mom say last night. Yeah. And so you guys all go to church Sunday. The when you get there, you see there's a visiting preacher. There's a little sign saying, um, uh, uh, welcome chaplain early, um, who is standing there. He's a, he's a kind of a short stocky dude, sort of, uh, balding, uh, got that, got that like, fringe of hair and like still trying to do the comb over but really should just stop 
Um, uh, cause there's not really that much left to comb over at this point. And he's, uh, sort of greeting everybody. He's sort of shaking everybody's hand. Like, like, hi, hi, how are you? Hello, everybody. Hey, uh, Della. Yeah. Do I recognize the name. Ooh, put a face to a name. I would love to. And what am I rolling with for that? Uh, you roll with their faction, in this case, mortality. All right. That is a seven. Seven. All right. On a hit, uh, let's see, you know the reputation. So you don't know Doug Early um, yourself. Um, if you've met, it was at a, like a, uh, it was in passing. Um, but you do know that he's kind of a, uh, a, a fire known to be kind of a firebrand preacher, kind of somebody who like really likes to, uh, um, sort of bring the, uh, like likes to yell from the pulpit. Um, this is a guy who eh, yeah, yeah, he's kind of a firebrand preacher. He's not he hasn't had to the best of your knowledge any like major scandals um. And but he is sort of considered to be one of these sort of up and coming people. He's had a couple. He's been on a couple of TV shows, spoken at a couple conventions, that kind of thing. So he's not big. He's not a big name, um, but he's kind of trying to become a big name. Uh, but he does uh, shake your hand, especially uh, when you come in and say. Soren, Saint Soren, it is so good to see you up here. Are you uh how do you like it up here? Away from away from the mosquitoes and the crocodiles and and all the all the glories of Florida. Chaplain Early, it's so nice to meet you. I I have been very blessed being here. Maryland has treated me very kindly and the Grimpley family has been so hospitable. That is wonderful to hear. I, I am look forward to, hey, I look forward to talking with you a little bit more after the service if uh if you're free. Well, I will have to see how things are. Um, you know, with all of the kids, we'll want to make sure that they're not overstimulated and tired. I completely understand. I completely understand. And he sort of moves on to the next one. He says, I, I, I look forward. Hopefully we get to talk. Um, kind of keep going through. Um, service sort of moves ahead normally, proceeds as normal. Um, chaplain early, uh, uh, sort of reads things and then, um, you have the gospel reading, gospel music, and then you have the sermon where he starts off Ordinarily, your priest, like, stands in the pulpit and, like, lectures. But Chaplain Early does not seem interested in that. He walks out, sort of standing in front of the pews, and he looks up at the great big crucifix. In the front of your church, there's a big uh, crucifix, a big statue hanging over the altar of Christ crucified. Um. So that's that is uh, Christ on the cross as opposed to like um, uh, 
uh, Christus Rex or another one of the um, like Christ Rising or something like that. It's it's specifically Christ crucified. The Savior in all of his dolorous suffering. Yes. Yes, this one is not as gory as some of them can be, but it's definitely not like a uh, a, a royal figure as some of them are. And he points to it and he says, "Look at, look at this. What do you see? Look at this. This man in pain." This man, this man knows our pain. Yes, he does. He knows suffering because he suffered. He knows how we suffer because he suffered. He knows sin because he's seen it through human eyes. Now, there are people out there in this world who see this pain and they see this suffering and they think, they think yeah, just had fucking fun. Grip they it, made grip them it, baby. Slop that down, dude. Thank you. Yeah, dude, crack we one knew it was for gonna the happen. big boy. And he slams his hand down onto the podium. Now, that's 25 Canadian dollars, not 25 American dollars. Give, give me a minute. <laughs> I will give you a minute. I will finish this yes. in Plain speech, and then I will redo the whole thing in stitch voice if I if you don't have the time. And he he slams a hand down on the podium and says, "That is wrong. There ain't no softness in our God. There's no weakness in our God. You yeah, want to tell me fun. that this it, God it, is a weak man, weak down, for his dude. suffering? Yeah, that dude. is not my Jesus." Boy. My God, he's a loving God, and my God, he is a forgiving God, but forgiveness has a limit. God has rules. My God, my Jesus, my Savior, keep us on the righteous path by any means necessary, and spare us your wrath on this sinful world that wants to forgive without repentance. From pain comes wrath. He knows our sin, and he hates it, and he'll burn it out of us. You bet he will. And I welcome those fires. Praise God. I welcome them. Delightful. <laughs> oh, my God. I just had flashbacks to being a child. <laughs> I am sorry. That was, that was so good. <laughs> there is a reason I gave a lot of warnings about that one. I did agree that I would do that in the stitch voice. So. You did. I did. All right. Look at this. Look at this man in pain. He knows our pain. Yes, he does. He knows what we'll suffer because he suffered. He knows sin because he's seen it through human eyes. Some people out there, they think this pain, this suffering, that it's made them soft. That's wrong. Ain't no softness in our God. Ain't no weakness in our God. You tell me God is a weak man. I tell you that is not my Jesus. My God, he's a loving God. My God, he's a forgiving God. But forgiveness has a limit. God has rules. My God, my Jesus, my Savior, keep us on the righteous path by any means necessary and spare us your wrath. From pain comes wrath. He knows our sin and he hates it. He'll burn it out of all of us. You bet he will. And I welcome those fathers. Praise God, I welcome. Amen. Oh my Amen. gosh, that was, that was so good. <laughs> I'm crying. Incredible. I uh, it's it's really too bad. Uh, I don't think there's anybody ooh. else other than us like in the ooh. chat right now. Uh, oh, oh, so it was but so you good, know though. what? That's so fine. Good. It's so good though. In, uh, oh, that, the, that's going to be that's going to be a Twitch clip. That is going to be hundred percent. It, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. <laughs> so good. Um. Cool, it, was, it was it was everything I ever dreamed of. Yes, you've been, thank you, you've Brendan. Been 
Thank you, Brendan. You've been waiting for that one. I, I, I have. I've been very patient. I've been a good boy this year. <laughs> I've had this written since session three. God. God. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, so, my, fa my face hurts. <laughs> as he is directing this sermon, as he is, is preaching this sermon, which, Soren, you're like, yep, this is about, this is about mm -hmm. what I expected. You, you, and you're kind of used to this sort of thing, so you're I'm just kind of- I'm from Florida. Like, yeah, I am. You are. You're just kind of like, yeah, he's, he's doing the- He's doing the thing he does, and you're kind of tuning it out. Um, but you do notice that a lot of the time he, he's he's down amid the people and not up in the pulpit. He's yelling. But you all notice. You don't have to read the room. He's looking at two people in the audience as he is delivering this sermon on wrath. One of them is Sefer. And the other is Matt, the guy who runs your youth group. And he gets back up. He sits down. Your usual preacher, um, Father, um, uh, Father Franklin, says, thank you. Thank you, Chaplain Early. Um, yes, if you would all uh, turn to page 423 in your hymnals, uh, we will be uh, singing verses 1 and 4 of the next hymn. And things kind of continue on. Uh, and the rest of the church service sort of proceeds normally. but. You hear murmuring amid the congregation, and you see um, Matt is a, a kind of a, um, Matt is like bright red. Like he is sitting there trying to sort of school his features, but he is not. He, uh, you see the 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 person uh the, the people sitting next to him actually ha like edged away from him slightly ah uh, and then the service is over and people are sort of shaking hands and leaving and so uh, yeah I think picking up on the reactions to Matt and picking up as well on the focus on Sefer, Soren is going to make a point of going to both of them. And with Sefer, it being more of a like, you know, hey, good to see you. Like, how are you doing? But with Matt very much making a show of I love our youth group so much. You're an incredible leader. We are so lucky to have you. I'm so honored to be there. Um, and trying to get as much attention on that interaction as is possible. I'm going to have you persuade an NPC. Because in this case, you're kind of persuading a group of NPCs. All right, that is a 12. Hell yeah, hell yeah, finally. So when you, you go up, you go up to Matt and uh, you, you sort of do this, um, you notice after you do that, like just sort of the way the people have been flowing, the way the crowd has been flowing, they're putting less conscious space. There's less of that sense of like the school of fish around a shark that kind of had been there before. There, people are now like, right? It's 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 like people remembered, like, oh, it's just Matt. 
It's just Matt. We like Matt. Oh, it's just Zephyr. He's they're weird, but we we like Zephyr. They're they're a good kid. Um. Um, Matt. like smiles kind of tightly he's like yeah 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 i'm good um uh, yeah i'll see you guys uh i'll see you i'll see you on wednesday i'm looking forward to it you've yeah. really made me feel welcome here I'm glad to hear it world needs more people like you that's a very kind thing for you to say He he's he's not he's not sticking around for coffee and danishes after after service. Uh, then why do you even go to church? I know. <laughs> Every time I go to church, my husband like has been rushing me out with the kids. And so I haven't been able to do coffee hour. And it's like, why am I here? I'm here oh, for the coffee hour. But see, 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 for 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 a second. For a second, I thought you were going to say that they were rushing you out because, like, you got to get to, like, you got to get in the donut line first or else all the donuts are going to, all the good donuts are going to be gone. That's important. Because it's facts. Yeah. Yep. You're going to be left with, like, the plain donuts or, like, the weird ones. Mm -hmm. or, or the better cookies that somebody brought in. You know they always make the better cookies than the other person who makes, you know, the not-so-good cookies. And everybody knows it, right? So you got to mm -hmm. get in line soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. critical stuff critical stuff um so yeah so he 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 bails early um do you say anything to sever jd or is it kind of just more sort of generic i think it's well uh, that might depend on how sever responds because soren you know does come up and just kind of does hi, and then a bit more quietly. How are you doing today? I'm a, uh, uh, you know, it's um, could be better. Um, I think my parents are like fighting or something. Um, and. Yeah, so hey, that guy, hey, so like the priest today, guest priest, is it, am I allowed to say that I think he was kind of a weirdo? I think you're definitely allowed to say that. Okay, cool. I'm really glad. Yeah, not my favorite. I like the last guest priest better. He had a guitar. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of the one today. I think there's much better chaplains to do a service than him. And you see your, your, Sefer, your parents are fuming. Um, uh, there are a couple people who are like, especially after Soren, after you sort of did your thing, there's a couple people who are like, that was weird. That was weird. I did not like that. Um, and you hear the unfortunate occasional, yeah, no, I don't like the way he said it, but you, you can't deny he's got a, he's got a point. Um, but you also hear a lot of people being like, no, he doesn't have a point. That's insanity. And you do see, uh, Sefer, your mom has marched, marched right up, um, uh, to Father Franklin and then she's having a, like a, a one of her very pointed conversations at him. And you see he's got his hands up like <sighs> when you guys um get uh As you guys leave, um, the chaplain, Chaplain Early, will uh, approach you, Soren, as you and Estelle are trying to go. Uh, and he'll say, "Hey, do you have a? Are the kids okay? Do you have a? You have a minute?" 
And Soren glances over at Estelle and asks, do you think you could get them in the car and I'll catch up? Um, Estelle, like, looks him up and down and um, gives that very obvious, like, I do not like this man um, uh, look. But then she says, if you're certain, I can get the kids in the car. I'll be, we'll wait for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain Estelle, I, uh, it's always good to be hospitable and friendly. All right. And he's like, well, great. I'm really glad we're getting this chance to, we're getting this chance to catch up. Yes, that was quite the sermon you gave today. I know it's not the style up here, but I I can't. I, I, I feel like if we let religion get too stuffy and academic and too much of a lecture, people just, people don't want that. People don't really want that. People want to feel it, you know? I like to let people feel it. Lakes of fire and things like that. That's some pretty intense stuff to have people feeling. Well, you know, it saves them in the long run. Better to be afraid of it than to experience it yourself, right? Seemed like a couple of people in the congregation caught your attention today, Chaplain Early. Uh, you know something that I don't know? He's going to look around and say, I don't want to be a gossip. There's something not right about that, that kid. I know that that guy, that blonde guy, He's made some kind of deal with something unhallowed. And that's, you can't, you can't be letting unhallowed things into God's house. It's hallowed ground. You can't do that. That's important. So, if he wants to be here, he should repent. Give up his unholy bargain that he made and repent. And then he can be welcome. Otherwise, he ought to go to wherever those demon worshippers go. I can't believe you people, Maryland lets the demon worshippers just walk around in the streets. What should they do with them instead? Just not let them. We can't let people like that practice openly. Are you suggesting that we lock them up somewhere? Might not be the worst place to start. Chaplain Early, how exactly... Do you expect any of those people find whatever you would consider salvation if you are cutting them off from the one place they could receive that? That's the other problem making it too academic. This house, God's house, this is one place. There's a whole bunch of other places. We make this place especially holy, sure. They're not welcome in it. But it's not like they can't find God. It's not like it's not God isn't everywhere. There are plenty of paths. but you would restrict access to them. I sure would. 
wouldn't you? Absolutely not. Chaplain Early, whatever you are seeing, you are just seeing what is on the surface and whatever your preconceived notions are of these people. Matt is an incredible youth leader to a group of kids who are trying to figure out things way beyond what kids are usually trying to figure out. And he is there and he is compassionate and he is empathetic and he is trying. And if he were not there, who knows what would happen to any of those kids. And Sefer, Sefer is also one of the kindest and compassionate and most selfless people I've met. So I don't think either one of them deserves to be told that they are unholy or unnatural and not allowed in the house of God. If that is where they're choosing to be, they obviously have a reason. And it does not take away anything from the rest of us who are there. It does not make anyone there less holy. It does not make the place less holy. If it did, well, wouldn't God just strike them down when they walked in? I'm going to give you two options. I'll give you a choice. You can either roll to persuade an NPC to get this man on your side. Or you could roll to figure someone out and find out more about what this guy is up to. Oh, 100% rolling to figure someone out. Dope. What am I rolling with? Uh, mind. Unless you have another thing for figure someone out in your sheet. But that's not a... That's not... Figuring people out isn't really a revenant. Uh, nope. Uh, which is why I'm going to use my plus one, because that's going to bump it up to a seven. Rad. Beautiful. We love to see it. Mm, excuse me. Okay. Uh, you hold two, and he's going to hold one on you. So you can ask two questions. Okay. I would like to know who's pulling his strings. That's going to be my first. You did anyone else lose Della? Oh no, oh, I'm oh, I'm just okay. not talking. Sorry, I, I'm. Yeah, nope. I'm just thinking, looking at my thinking corner. There's a spider up there. Um, it's still there. Oh, this is a different one. This is a. Uh, <laughs> it's a house spider. It's fine. It's it's eaten. Uh, house centipedes, which is what I want it to do. Um, the uh, at this moment, you don't think anyone is pulling his strings. You're pretty sure he's a true believer. He believes what he's saying. No one is pushing him to say or think or do any of this. But you, it's just a suspicion, I mean, inkling. When Imogen yesterday was talking about the sons of Adam, they mentioned a phrase 
by any means necessary. And you couldn't help but notice that in the sermon, too. All right. How could I put him in my debt? This guy wants to be in the big leagues and he's not. He talks like he's in the big leagues. He shouts like he's in the big leagues, but he has the charisma of an oyster. He's not, uh, this is not a, you know, he's, he's an uncharismatic man aiming for a charismatic faith. And it, that's not, it's not working out for him. You're pretty sure you could get him deeply in your debt if when your friend um uh Aoife. oh Aoife, when your friend saint Aoife came to town if you got this man on stage with you and she you got that would have him deeply in your debt. Now he's going to he's going to ask you a question as well. How could what would it take to get Soren to turn on his friends. Until coming to Maryland, Soren has always been seen in the company of his parents. And I would imagine there are certainly rumors going around about why he is no longer with them. And so I think it would be fair to say that Soren's conviction about his friend seems very genuine and authentic because it is. Mm -hmm. But if there was pressure and leverage from his parents to sever those connections, I think it would be clear that would be a way to get him to step away from those people. All right. He, uh, he sort of looks at you sort of appraisingly as you say your piece and says, interesting perspective maybe we can chat again soon I think I'd like that he and Soren told... says I I would like that as well Chaplain Early and you know in fact I don't know if you've heard but St. Aoife is going to be here in the near future perhaps the three of us could have a chance to talk together and in the meantime, you could give some consideration about what I said. He, like, when you say that, he his eyes kind of pop out of their sockets a little bit. Hi, Tracy! Uh, uh, his eyes pop out of their sockets a little bit, and he's just like, oh, oh, uh, well, that would be, uh, that would be, Really cool. Um, here's my here's my card. Uh, absolutely, I would I would love that. Um, and he kind of turns away to go back, but you see him every so often, like look over to glance at you, and he like nods as you leave. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and you definitely felt that energy shift. He was he was brushing you off, and then you said that, and he's like, oh. Mm -hmm. 
um, Sefer, your mom comes back and is just like, well, I think that's, this is, this is stupid. This is dumb. I do not like this. Um, and she actually, she actually goes up to uh, Imogen, to your mom, and says, uh, Mrs. Warwick, what do you know? What do you, what do you know about, about Chaplain Early? And she's just like, I know probably about as much or less than you do. And she, and she says, I don't, I don't like that we're paying a man like that to come and speak at our church. I'm not a huge fan of it either. Um, we can, uh, do you want to, do you want to like push a vote and see if we can like make sure that this doesn't happen again? And she says, yes, yes, I do. And they kind of like, they kind of like, um, they don't link arms possibly because there's a pretty major height difference between the two of them. Um, and, but they, uh, they sort of like walk out, sort of sit in the corner and they do, they do the church lady thing where they talk very seriously over biscuits. Yeah. Imogen probably doesn't do anything in particular regarding that thinking like, okay, mom is just going to deal with this. She's just going to deal with this and nip it in the bud. Mm hmm. That is. That's what your mom does. Or Warwick handles shit. Mm-hmm. Um, Loki, my favorite NPC, who never gets, Good. doesn't get enough screen time. Loki. Um, my mom's a bitch. I love it. Yeah, she's not a great mom. <laughs> um. <laughs> That the next day is Monday. You guys go to school, unless there's anything else you guys want to do. Um, do you guys want to roll on your projects for Sunday, Sefer? Or is there something else you wanted to do? I, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna succeed. I'm gonna succeed gonna at a roll it. this game. You're gonna do it. I believe, I believe in me. So with the so with the plus one for in mind, it is a five, meaning even still with the plus one, it would still not put me into success territory. Do you, do you, you know? Do you, you want to push your luck? You know, you know what? I think I'm gonna I'm push my luck. You're gonna push I'm, your luck. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna push, push luck. my luck. Do you want to use different dice? I would have to. No, actually, no. There is a ten of dice sitting right there. What am I talking about? But no, I'm doubling down on these dice. Double like I said, down. This. this this D, the red D6 here, this one came in my AD&D starter set when I was 11 years old. We have history. It's normally a very good boy. And you know what? I believe in it. It's okay. Just, it's, just, it's just having an off day. It's having an off day. Okay, that is a seven. Okay. I got Hooray! there. Hooray! You got there. You pushed your luck and you got Yay. there. Congratulations. You did it. Mm-hmm. So that is another success. Um, you have two out of the 12 successes that you need to get in order to get this project done. So at this point, you now you've translated, you've managed to translate the rest of that page that with the, uh, by this method, all things can be unmade. And, but what is on that page is like, it's actually just like a, almost like a, uh, it's not like a recipe or anything like that. It's more like a fairy tale. It's more like, it, it talks about, 
a, a, a child, a lost child, uh, coming home and being welcomed. It talks about a feast. It talks about, um, and, and in the feast, you've been able to sort of like pull apart a couple things where you're like, okay, so they refer to roasted bull here. I think that tracks to this alchemical notation and this ingredient here tracks to this one there. And what, what's interesting is in this notation that you've managed to translate, you think that you found a way to shut down it 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 looks like it's trying to describe a way to shut down a homunculus but this series of chemicals that you've been able to alchemical reagents that you've managed to identify you're like i am i am like 85 to 90 percent certain that would not work not enough to like test it on myself but like i am pretty sure that would not actually work so i don't know i'm i'm missing something here but you do have that whole page now translated mm -hmm. yes yeah, so, um, the, the, so something about this doesn't make any sense either i i've i've either mistranslated this or they're wrong or there's additional context that i'm missing yeah yeah monday at school or now this this might be on sunday as well um jerome you're hanging out at home and there is a knock at your door i go and open the door and it is Chicory St. Bride. Oh, hey, Chicory. Uh, what is happening? You want to come in? Yes, thank you. Cool. And she sits down. Um, actually, first she, she greets your parents very kindly. And she pulls out a, uh, and she actually like brings them a little, like a little gift and sort of hands them like, she says, my mother, my mother baked today and she always bakes too much here. Uh, she wanted me to bring these over for you. And it's like some like, uh, you know, those peanut butter cookies with the fork, the, uh, it's like, oh, a bunch yeah, of, like absolutely. The, like, yeah, crisscrossed or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She brings a bunch of those peanut butter cookies. Um, uh, over and your parents are like, oh, thank you very much. And they're like, well, uh, you know, feel free to hang out. You can hang out in the basement or or wherever you want to go. Um, and uh, you can see there is a little bit of like shock, surprise on both your parents' faces that this stunningly gorgeous cheerleader is coming to talk to their gangly 14 year old son but they're a little bit yeah, like they, they, they look over at me because she brought this over and i'm just like <laughs> All right, you know hey when you guys your parents give you guys some privacy and um she sort of sits down across from you and says so you uh you talked to youth pastor Sam, huh? Uh, Wait. I didn't, but I talked to uh, Penny about it because she was a youth group leader and she sat down with, she told me anyway, that she sat down with, uh, I think Sam and father uh, Franklin, right? So from what I understood, like that was all kind of like taken care of and like you were, you were good to go and that like everything was fine. You didn't have to, you didn't have to show up anymore if you didn't want to. So I thought we were all like, good to go on that. Uh, from what I heard, it did something, did something happen? 
Well, you see, they called my mother. Uh. And they, they explained things to me. My mother. Mm -hmm. They explained things to her that, oh, it's totally voluntary and your daughter doesn't have to be here. But. Do you know who my mother is, Jerome? I don't think Jerome knows who her mother is. Would Jerome know who her mother is? You can, um, yeah, probably not. We don't try to make a big deal of it. Most people don't. My mother is the queen of the Fae in exile. You're muted, Bedlam. Oh, uh, yeah. So that that was a that was a bigger deal than I than I thought. Uh, uh... She had some thoughts about me not wanting to be there. Yeah. So if I'd known that, um, if I realized that, I would have approached fixing this a little differently. Um, uh, no, no. Yeah. Okay. I, I, you know, I can, I can see how this might have been my fault. I, I failed to impress upon you the importance of this the importance oh, of discretion in this it seems really important to you i got that i did um yeah. i it seemed like a simple solution to me i did not realize some of the repercussions involved in this so i'm sorry about that um okay mom saying how maybe we could still fix it no I'm locked in now. Because you see, when you are the child of a conquered nation's leader, you don't actually get to make choices. But this was my fault. I made some assumptions. I made some assumptions about you. Jerome. I made the assumption that because you were one of aces, that you were a thug. I assumed that you were going to solve this problem the way I ex would expect someone of your lineage to solve the problem. I thought you were going to throw a chair or something. I thought you were going to spray paint the basement. I thought you were going to do something dramatic and get the whole thing canceled. Hmm. Interesting. But you did something interesting. You went for the political move, which is interesting. And again, I should have known you're going for student council. Your aim, you have. You have ambitions that maybe outstrip your instincts. That could be useful. I'm okay. willing to continue, despite this failure to get things shut down, I'm willing to continue to back you for student council, for freshman class president. So let me, uh, let me just get this straight. Uh, um, you did a key element in taking care of this for you but you're graciously allowing me to uh 
you're, you're graciously allowing us to continue with the agreement uh, regardless of my failure. You've got it. Sounds, uh, sounds great. I think And let me be very clear here. A large portion of this is, in fact, coming from my mother. I think you might have promise, and I want to keep an eye on you. And if I have to do that by calling in debts, I will. But I would much rather form a partnership, form an alliance. So, as I said, I'm not happy. Perhaps you can gauge some of that in my bearing and tone. But I don't think me being unhappy about these results necessarily means we need to change anything. I think you will will probably be very good at being freshman class president, but if you ever want to be sophomore class president, you should probably learn a couple things. Okay. Um, here's what I think. Uh, I think that you don't win this. I think that your mother is driving this, um, and I think that you're the one who made a mistake in the first place. If you would like to put me into student council, that will be fine. Uh, and I will continue a partnership with you, but this was not my, my fault. And uh, we can continue forward, but um, I'm not in your debt. Anyway, thank you for the cookies. Uh, maybe we'll see each other on Monday. He stands up and he opens the door to the kitchen. Okay. And she stands and she smiles and she says, I am the daughter of the queen in exile. And you are in my debt. Would you like me to prove it? I, I don't see what you need to prove. Well, this has been interesting. I hope you enjoy the cookies. Jerome. You should come to the party this weekend. I think you'll find it interesting. I was planning on being there. Yeah. Okay. And she will leave. Jerome closes the door behind her uh, and throws out the cookies. <laughs> Your dad's like, hey, I got those, I got those peanut butter cookies. Those are really good. Yeah, no, no, sorry, dad. Uh, I don't know what's going on with her and I don't trust her. Uh, so now, uh, also, apparently she's like, like the daughter of a fake queen. I, I don't even know. Like, uh Let's just leave those uh, and maybe not accept the gift. Uh, it's cool, but um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So J Jerome is uh, Jer okay. Jerome's a little full of himself because he just got inducted by this like demon. He just pulled some like powers out of his you know pocket uh -huh. to try and find the bones thing. He's he, he's not feeling cowed by this uh, by this uh, kid. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. That's completely fair. Uh, yeah, uh, no, your dad's like, oh, man. Yep, yeah, nope, nope. Uh, I think school's going to get interesting, Dad, uh, but uh, we'll see how it goes. 
we'll see about the whole student body thing. I, I told you guys I'd do it. Uh, still going to work on it, but um, uh, not under the wrong conditions, right? So that's the, that's what you guys always taught me. Do it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go lay down or something. I'll be up in my room. He goes upstairs. <laughs> uh, your your parents just sort of like, man, I like those cookies. Your mom starts making peanut butter cookies. Uh, <laughs> um, Imogen, do you start going through those papers, those uh, those boxes of papers that you got? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Like it's probably the first thing I, I probably tell my mom, like. Um, as soon as we get home from church, like I need to decompress after that sermon. Um, I'm sure you understand that was a lot. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a fan of that type of that type of preaching. And I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's helpful. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It's um, divisive to say the least. So I'm going to. Just go upstairs, close the door, and just um, deal with that stress. Of course. Okay. Yeah, and so she goes upstairs, closes the door, and starts digging into the papers. Okay. So. Le papier. Le papier. So you can roll with... Uh, not, not that, not, that's not a real thing. <laughs> oh, what up, uh... What did you take for your advancement? Um, I actually ended up taking, um, a another scholar move. Okay, what did you take? Arcane Detective. Rad. Okay, cool. That's a that's a really good that's a really good move. I think for this though, I'm gonna have you roll with mind. Okay. For Sick. uh for research. Uh that's an eight. An eight. Okay. Oh, this this is part of your private collection. When you retreat to your private collection to research an occult occurrence, object, or individual, roll with mind. On a ten, pick three. On a seven to nine, pick one. Um, so sorry. Um, I'm texting the family group chat about what I was telling y'all about earlier. Um, absolutely so, understandable. So what again. you? So what you get from this? This research you get. Um, is as you're looking through these papers, an unmistakable pattern seems to uh, seems to appear, uh -huh. especially as you start to see your father's name show up. You see evidence that there was a cover-up. Your father was somehow involved. You see references to it here and there, but as you're putting these pieces together, you discover there, there was some form of cover-up. Your father's shunning and eventual excommunication were part of it. He was thrown out to cover up for something else. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, it does. So I assume if I had rolled better, I would have known. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I will let you us use this as your private collection move, since that is a scholar move. Yeah. So you get to pick one of these things as well. You discover a previously unknown weakness or vulnerability. You discover a previously unknown resource or ally, or you don't attract any supernatural attention to your research. You could pick one.
I think I discover a previously known, I mean, sorry, previously unknown. Hold on, let me see. If I roll even, I'm going with the top one. If I roll odd, I'm going with the bottom one. Okay, uh, I discover previously unknown weakness or vulnerability. The weakness you are able to identify in this is that everything seems to be going through one person's hands. All of these orders are being carried out by multiple people, mm -hmm. but you see one name cited over and over and over again. You see the name, um, hold on, two very brief seconds. Da, 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 da. Um, you see the name Bob Haley. He CC'd on every message. A lot of stuff is coming through his office. Talk to Bob, talk to Dr. Haley. Repeated over and over again. Would I know who this is? You do not. Fuck. Well, shit. And that is where we are going to end today's session. Revelations, bombshells. Thank you all for being here today with us at Thy Kingdom Come. Uh, we have been live from the apocalypse. Uh, and, uh, we hope that you will join us for what will likely be, um, I'm not sure if we're calling it the season finale or the mid season finale. I don't know. We'll figure it out, which is going to be off of our usual schedule, but it will be on Thursday, the 14th of September at 8 PM will be our next, uh, session. Um, Thank you all very much for being here. And as always, thank you to my amazing cast. Cast, if you would like to let people know where they can find you. Uh, Amber? Hi, everybody. I'm Amber, also known as The Space Jamber. I'm a three-time any nominated teacher RPG writer, podcaster, uh, writer, editor, podcaster, and streamer. Uh, right now, I'm taking a little bit of a health break um, while I get some stuff figured out. So I, not too much for me to plug right now. Um, but check us out on season two of A Season of Shadows, uh, Seasons of Secrets and Shadows, led by JD, um, premiering in September. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Bedlam. Yeah, I did this uh, backwards earlier. I said where you can find me, which was uh, right here uh, whenever we stream this uh, this game. Um, and I have been uh, Jerome Nears, which is what I should have said earlier when I was leading in. So we'll do this in reverse. Uh, Jerome Nears is a 14 year old just trying to make his way in this crazy world. Um, and anyway, yeah, you can find me here next time. And that's it. Incredible. All right. 14-year-old with a bag of cocaine. 14-year-old with a bag. <laughs> Not anymore. He handed it off. <laughs> he's got one hand in his pocket. <laughs> and the other one's doing a drug deal. <laughs> like, come on. Incredible. And Brendan. Uh, hello. Yes, I was Brendan uh, playing Sefer. Uh, going through it as always. Uh, and yes, you can see me back here Thursday, Thursday the 14th for our, our ultimate session of, I guess, this arc, I guess you would say. Um, 
Uh, when I'm not here, I am also playing Alex Sandowski, a.k.a. Victory, over on Academy H, uh, one of our streamed games and also one of our podcasted games. Uh, I... That is the days ago, sorry, usually that I plug being Sefer, uh, which I, which you just saw. Um, then I, uh, so this coming Wednesday, uh, I think the plan is we're going to be probably streaming our first recording session of season two of Cryptid Community College. Uh, double check on one thing about that, but I think that is still happening at this point. Um, also, if you happen to live in the DMV area and you like doing LARPs sometimes. Uh, I'm also one of the writers for Dystopia Rising Maryland, uh, and our uh, premiere opener is two weeks. Two weeks from today is going to be our opening weekend, and I'm not stressed at all. It's going to be amazing. And I think that's it for me. <laughs> JD. Hey, I am JD. I can be found on social media at JD, not Jason Dean. And in this game, I have played not so saintly Soren Augustine. Um, you can find me in a number of things that happen on the channel. Uh, I run Redacted, and as Amber mentioned, I will we will be returning on September 15th for season two of A Season of Secrets and Shadows, Two Secrets, Two Shadows. Um, you can also find me with Exquisite Corpse Presents every Saturday for Sister Cities. Um, and you can find me with Tales from the Table Studios uh, just about every Monday for SCP A Crumbling Foundation, although we have been on hiatus. And that is it for me. And that brings us to you, Della. Okay. Well, I am Della. I have been your master of ceremonies for this game. Uh, my throat still hurts from being a screaming preacher. I don't think that's going to be a uh, a good vocation for me. Uh, so, or next time I need to do some vocal exercises. Um, yeah, you can find me here running this game and playing in uh, JD's Redacted game. Um, if you want, please join our Discord community. Uh, we would love to have you, and that's where you can find out more about us, about Live from the Apocalypse, uh, and about any future uh, games, events, or um, opportunities to uh, do good for our communities. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, JD, do you want to find us somebody to raid? Yep, I will us to the thanks for watching screen hang around we will find someone to raid and we will see you next on sunday for veil breakers